Hi guys, I want to invite you to join the Patreon where you will get some benefits as well as audiobooks that will not be uploaded on YouTube. Whatever, Taiyuya nodded and gave him a kiss on the cheek before leaving the Hokage's office. Shall we go, Choji? Tony ignored the sly looks and smirks from those present. Two hours later. This is a lot to take in Choza rubbed his head as he digested all the information I'm happy for you, son, it's nice news that you've gained a power so in line with our clan. Should we start looking for some wives for him? Choji's mother asked as she rubbed her cheek with her hand he's getting to be of an age and he hasn't even brought a bride in all these years. Better secure some grandchildren early and bring in some fresh blood. Tony could see Choji start to sweat when his mother brought up the subject of marriage and had to endure the laughter. And you, Tony? Asked Choji's mother taking advantage of the fact that the subject had come up when will you ask Taiyuya? Tony? When did he leave? Choza asked as he noticed his adoptee's disappearance. They only looked away for a second. I'm still here. I just logged off for a couple of days, as I'm gathering information for something. Description The client needs to gather all kinds of information about known, common sense or established facts about transmigration, reincarnation or ice sky situations. Examples Being hit by a truck makes you transmigrate. Rob is the name of the person in charge. Being betrayed makes your memories travel back in time. Play the amnesia card if you don't inherit memories by possessing a body. Mission rewards. Demonstrate that you have great knowledge on the subject, more than others. 500 karmic points to your life account, useful in case you are ice skate. The possibility for Tony to win another waifu only if you get a certain amount of information and it cannot be repeated. Good luck, ninjas of the hidden village of the internet. Your contribution. It's alright, it's alright. I see a lot of people are against the last part with the waifu, so forget that part. We'll play with Harem in another fanfic. Tony trained with Taiyuya in one of the more isolated training grounds in the village, helping him become familiar with his new skills and gourmet cells. He provided him with ideas of everything he remembered from Zebra, such as sound armor, voice meteor, echolocation, etc. Since Taiyuya was already someone who had knowledge of sound due to his flute techniques and didn't need to start studying from scratch, he achieved a quick basic mastery over his new abilities. All she needed after that was practical experience. The only part that continued to bother her was her infernal ears, but she discovered that she could regulate the sensitivity with chakra to gradually adapt it wouldn't be long before she could begin to hear the heartbeat and know if someone was lying, among other abilities. Tony made a mental note to be careful when talking to her in the future, having a girlfriend with such a sonic ability, such a passionate nature and lie detection was a tricky thing to deal with. Tony also tried using the sound bazooka and the burning sensation in his throat after employing the ability was not very pleasant, he had to recover by drinking mellow cola, unlike Taiyuya, whose gourmet cells were already modifying his body so as not to have such problems. But there were significant differences. While Taiyuya could already launch the attack in a decent radius of effect, when Tony used it it was truly indiscriminate area destruction. His theory was that due to his increased reserves, his evolved gourmet cells and his strengthened body along with his minor achievement in food immersion, his attack was not as simple as a simple addition. It was a pity he hadn't managed a complete immersion, otherwise his strength would have leapt above the clouds. But he knew that was unlikely, he enjoyed food himself but he would never accept something like being eaten by others as a matter of course. He would be the predator at the top of the food chain and nothing else. He was not Toriko and would not follow his philosophy of only killing what he would eat. The pair enjoyed their solo training for a few hours as they could rarely find moments like this, discussed a few combo attacks, had a romantic meal alone where they ate 700g pieces of jewel meat each bite and returned alone after spending some time getting cozy while Fenrir watched the surroundings. When they got home, they discovered that Karen still hadn't returned yet. Apparently Tsunade was really excited about her new acquisitions and it was to be expected that her perception of time would go up in smoke. Taiyuya went to sleep, she was tired with all the activity they had done together and Tony went to the kitchen to prepare some bentos to take to the Hokage's office. He didn't know how many people should still be left there, so after preparing about twenty, he sent it directly to his little sister using reverse summoning with alchemy. Then he went to bed as well. The next morning, he woke up and on his way to the living room, 
he could see that Karen was sleeping in her bed with a tired expression evident. He found a note in the kitchen thanking everyone for the bentos and from the traces Tony noticed, it seems that she barely went to sleep recently. I guess Sunade and company will be sleeping too, he muttered as he made himself some toast with jewel jam. What should he do next? Let's see, Naruto would go to the bridge, then the fight with Orochimaru would happen, he would have a confrontation with Sasuke, he also didn't need to act against Kakuzu and Haydn as they would sort themselves out after they eliminated Asuma. Poor Kurinai, she really doesn't deserve the sadness she'll go through. And no matter how many times she turns it around, she also doesn't understand how someone like Asuma managed to be with her. His theory is that he gradually wore her down over the years before finding her vulnerable and attacking with her guard down. Should she consider taking on Akatsuki's immortal duo so that Kurinai and her baby wouldn't be left alone? It was also a point of pain and maturity for the Inoshikacho trio. Now he really felt the urge to intervene, even though it really didn't benefit him at all. He couldn't care less about Asuma, he even dislikes him a bit for being a chain smoker and son of the third Hokage. But. Choji, Shikamaru and Ino would be really sad if he ends up dying. One was family and got along quite well with the other two due to their childhood. He also knew Kurinai and helped him a few times, it would be like returning the favor by multiplication. The baby also didn't have to carry the dislike he had for his father. And he could deprive the Edo Tensei from using it against him. Now my conscience would really torment me if I did nothing Tony rubbed his face in exasperation. He just wanted to get an idea of how much time was left before Payne's attack. It was too late for regrets, who told him to think that hard. But. I have no idea of the precise time when they will meet Kakuzu and Haydn, Tony frowned. He only remembered that Kakuzu went after a fire temple monk's head or something to collect his bounty. Turns out that monk had some sort of past with Asuma and somehow Shikamaru ends up running into them while Haydn waits outside the payoff area. Truth be told, from this point on the filler made it lose some interest. Although Shikamaru has gotten stronger at the Colosseum and must have memorized the information of the Akatsuki members he delivered, it's still not enough. Nor would it be too long until the meeting he scheduled with Itachi, which he didn't know if he will attend. As Tony pondered while eating lunch, a sound rang in his head. New mission launched. The host has fulfilled a hidden achievement. Ding. The host has completed a hidden achievement. Hidden achievement true omnivore. Condition devour natural energy within your body and reach a certain level of mastery in food immersion. Hidden reward gourmet sage mode. Tony looked stunned at the message and when he came out of his stupor, he felt a vein swell in his forehead. System, what's the meaning of this? He protested, I tried so hard to get Anko to allow me to make a summoning contract with Ryuichi Cave, all so I could learn the sage mode there later when I felt ready, and now you tell me there was a gourmet sage mode. Even if it is a hidden achievement, couldn't you give me even a hint about it? Also, what do you mean by devouring natural energy? The host has only fulfilled the food immersion condition recently and the jewel jam he just ingested has supplied the natural energy needed to reach the minimum required accumulation. Wait, since when did my food have natural energy? Tony felt there was an important point he was missing. Since the beginning. The amount contained in each ingredient and food is just enough to make small improvements, but due to the intake of natural energy over the long period of time, the host's body has been adapting to it and retaining a certain tolerable not excessive amount. That is one of the reasons why the host's meals possess a characteristic of improving his diners. You know, it would have been useful to know that from the beginning. I could have cultivated an army of sages with that in mind. Tony shook his head and examined the other notification. Ding! A new mission has been generated eliminate the Akatsuki immortals. Task Haydn and Kakuzu have hunted down many people to collect their bounties and fund the Akatsuki organization. Among their victims are ninjas who were also outstanding cooks or new delicious special recipes passed down from generation to generation that will never see the light of day again. Unforgivable. Kills Haydn uncompleted. Eliminate Kakuzu uncompleted. Reward flavor change Toriko carbonated rain technique. Flavor change. Even with Toriko's knowledge, Tony didn't remember what the heck that was. So he opened the description and read it carefully. Flavor change an obscure cooking technique employed by Dark Chef Joa. Cut someone and instead of a wound, the victim gets a scar. At the same time, 
the person who goes through this technique will become a servant of the host because the change in flavor also causes a change in mindset. Warning. This technique can be used against anyone, but there are a few exceptions that will not be affected due to certain limitations, special physiques, or circumstances. I see. I guess characters like Haydn or Edo Tensei returnees are among the exceptions, Tony commented, and receiving no denial from the system, he knew he was right. Then he looked at the other reward. Carbonated rain technique The host forms clouds in the surroundings and after a unique transformation, it becomes a shower of the best mellow cola. Within its range and for the duration of the rain, the host and his allies will receive a strength boost, chakra recovery and energy increase. Enemies, on the other hand, will feel sticky and uncomfortable without any enhancement. An area enhancement? Tony raised his eyebrow in surprise, what is the exact range and duration? Depends entirely on the amount of chakra the host invests. So it's like Sasuke's Kirin. He remembered that Sasuke used a fire technique to do something to the clouds and then be able to cast Kirin, so it probably followed a similar trend. Now, how should she handle this without arousing suspicion? He couldn't go and warn his friends that his sensei would die from Haydn's strange technique when he went to help his fire temple acquaintance. Even Choji would realize that was not something he should know unless he was a fortune teller. He spent a few minutes tapping his finger on the table as he pondered. Maybe he could use that way, even if I don't like it a possibility crossed his mind, but he preferred to avoid it. One hour later. To hell with it, I really can't think of anything else. Let's go with plan A. He got up and left the house, on his way to the Akimichi clan. After making sure Choji's mother was not present, he approached her and gave her something along with some instructions with a very serious expression. Did you get it? I got it, don't worry, I'll make sure to always carry it with me, Choji nodded and carefully put away what Tony gave him, do you want to stay for lunch? I just had lunch Tony refused even though he could eat without restrictions, he had to handle several administrative matters of his stores and start sorting out some new ingredients he got at the Colosseum. Determine their price, whether they are saleable, their available quantities, etc. Would you mind cooking something then? Choji shamelessly revealed his true purpose. He had begun to familiarize himself with gourmet cells under Tony's instructions and was startled to discover that his favorite snacks had become rather bland. Although they still satiated him, it simply wasn't the same as in the past. Only by eating the food from the store could Cuckoo feel that his body was satisfied. Well, I can prepare some things, Tony pondered for a moment and agreed. He went through the kitchen and brought out many dishes such as pears in wine, extra crispy carriage, rice omelets, etc. The other younger members of the Akimichi clan detected the aroma of the food and soon he was busy cooking some additional dishes. An hour later, he had to put out the fire and leave because he couldn't put off his business affairs any longer. He made sure to leave a hidden bento for Choza and his wife, because when they found out that he came to cook for the clan and they couldn't eat some of what he prepared, they would scold him. He spent the day so busy that before he knew it, it was already dark and he had to leave back home when his workers reminded him that it was closing time. System, Tony called after realizing his oversight, tell me about the gourmet sage mode I got. How do I start it and all that? While the three wise territories have a habit of sensing natural energy in one form or another, the host only needs to ingest foods rich in natural energy to enter gourmet wise mode. As long as the host continues to eat and replenish the spent natural energy in time, there is theoretically no time limit to the sage mode. In fact, if the host ingests a high enough amount, it can even detach and release the gourmet demon and let it fight by its side until it has no more energy and must integrate back into the host's body. Can I take out the gourmet demon? Tony was stunned at the news. The gourmet demon can increase the time it is separated from the host by devouring its enemies and converting them into energy. But because separation for too long a period can be dangerous, the gourmet demon cannot be separated from the host for more than a week at a time using this method. Also, since the gourmet demon is part of the host, it knows allies from enemies, so there is no need to worry about it eating the wrong people or creatures. I am back. Thank you for being patient. Thank you, Tony, come back soon. Tucci said goodbye to Tony after he stopped by to eat at his place, the pile of empty ramen bowls were a good proof of the terrifying appetite he could have. Sometimes he gets lazy to cook or prepare something, so for a change of scenery, he goes to places like Ichiraka Ramen to support his customers and treat himself to something different. 
Today wasn't the case though, as she should probably be cooking soon. It's almost time, let's see if he shows up or not in the end he muttered as he walked through the streets of Kanoha. A few days have passed and the time for the meeting with Itachi is approaching, but even though they agreed to meet, there is still the doubt that if he will show up or everything can go as he expects. The agreed place for the meeting was the Forest of Death, more specifically, the top of the tower that was used during the examination two years ago. Away from civilians and prying eyes. Although she usually opened a couple of ninjas controlling the place, after informing Tsunade, the Hokage withdrew the surveillance that night as an exception. Tony arrived in advance and contemplated the surroundings under the moonlight, which was full tonight. He couldn't help but remember the Akatsuki rings he incautiously and had with him, how much would it affect the Biju's extraction speed if they didn't have the full set? Come on, you've been staring at me for like a whole minute, it's uncomfortable, he said as he turned his head and looked towards a particular tree. Your sensitivity is remarkable Itachi stepped out from the leaves and with a few jumps, climbed up to the roof, leaving a distance of several meters between them. Tony guessed it was the genuine Itachi and not a clone, because there was no need to be so cautious in the first few steps. But it was Itachi, he might try to make some kind of strange move that he wouldn't expect. Fenrir, checked the surroundings from Tony's shadow, came out the biggest wolf Itachi had ever seen in his life. What kind of jutsu allows to hide such a monster with such perfection? Even he didn't notice its presence. Fenrir eyed Itachi warily and in the next second, his figure vanished, revealing a speed that momentarily left behind a residual image. I made sure Zetsu won't pay attention to me, Itachi said calmly. You did well, but it never hurts to be sure, Tony replied as his eyes scanned the surroundings, have you thought about my proposal yet? Assuming you can cure me, I'm willing to comply with your second condition. I ask no more of you, nodded Tony, just to be clear, aside from the loss of vision caused by the use of your eyes and the disease you have, is there anything else you want to fix in passing? Skin whitening, perhaps? No, just cure my condition in my eyes. Will you use your special food? That's the plan, Tony laced his fingers together, it sounds like you've done some research on it, so what would you prefer to start with? How exactly will it work? Itachi asked for more information, as he could be left in a temporarily weak state. I'll make two different dishes Buddha jumping the wall for your condition and a carrot stew with rabbit meat for your eyes, he explained, you can watch me cook if it will put your mind at ease. If you eat the stew, your eyes will be temporarily out of commission while they are being repaired. It won't amount to blindness, but you'll have a hard time seeing with all the tears and debris you'll get. The other dish, well, it will make you spit up blood while it reconfigures the affected organs. It will be an unpleasant process, but the result can't be disputed. Itachi was silent for a few minutes as he weighed the options. I'll start with the Buddha jumping over the wall, he said announcing his decision. His eyes were meant for Sasuke, if he had to test what Tony said, he would rather risk his body and not damage his eyes. He had already prepared countermeasures for the crows to take his Sharingans in case of a trap, so he was willing to give it a try based on the information about Tony he gathered. Tony nodded. While this dish in proper conditions usually took a day or two to prepare properly, with the power of the devil fruit, he could plate it in less than half an hour. Plucking the tiles from the tower and turning them into ingredients, he began to prepare the meal. Quail eggs, bamboo shoot, spring onion, abalone, shark fin, chicken, ginseng, mushrooms and taro. Itachi had his Sharingan activated and tried to understand the technique behind the transformation, but he couldn't grasp anything despite seeing the change with his own eyes. Tony's movements were skillful and fast, but they were in slow motion for Itachi. All the way, he didn't add anything suspicious and soon a pleasant scent came before him. Will you eat standing up or shall we go inside? There are chairs and tables in the waiting room, Tony held the bowl with the food in his hand and asked Itachi. I prefer to eat standing up. Let's go down then, I don't know if you'll lose your balance and break your neck once you start healing with the bowl still in his hand, he descended from the tower and waited for him on the floor. Itachi separated into several crows, which gathered again in front of Tony. Tony rolled his eyes, here, he held out the plate and waited. Leave it in the grass and move away. Tony looked at him with an expression of are we really going to do that? Seeing that Itachi wouldn't move if I didn't, I couldn't help but feel strange, it was like he was doing something illegal. He was healing a sick person in good faith, for Hashirama's underpants. 
He did as Itachi asked and put the food on the ground, then stepped back and lay down against a tree trunk. Itachi walked over and examined the plate. After making sure there were no traps present, he picked it up and sniffed it, using his training to try and locate any poisons or drugs that were present. You know, that's starting to get insulting. I have my own principles as a chef, you know. A vein stood out on Tony's forehead. It reminded him of that insufferable girl from Iwagakure, Anoki's granddaughter. Perhaps because he made sure there was nothing strange really or because of Tony's comment, he took a tentative sip of the soup and his eyes widened slightly in surprise. Delicious. Now if he could just add one of his famous perfect fried eggs to it. He began to eat, paying attention to Tony's location, not quite letting his guard down despite the delight of his taste buds. Tony had to hold back his laughter, because maybe with the paranoia shown by Itachi, he would think he successfully poisoned him or something. Reforming his organs to cure his condition might or might not, appear in the form of explosive diarrhea. But he didn't need to be so descriptive or he'd lose his appetite, right? Itachi couldn't remember the last time he had to go through such a degrading experience. He was forced to wear Akatsuki's spare robe. Did you know this was going to happen? He asked with a hint of spite in his voice. He could feel the difference in his body, he really had been healed against all odds and was very grateful, but the process proved more unpleasant than some simple pain. If it weren't for the fact that he knew for a fact that they hadn't seen each other before during their meeting over the Gara thing and had no hard feelings, he would have sworn he had done it on purpose. I told you beforehand that it could happen, the exact details vary from person to person Tony pretended not to realize he was talking, while not looking him in the eyes in any case, if you've already confirmed the effect, just quickly eat the other dish. Fortunately for Tony, everything followed the desired path and there was no Zetsu or Kisame suddenly appearing and interrupting their encounter. It's a pity that your people were attacked and these recipes can only be prepared by you, Itachi sighed as he regained his lost sight. Tony couldn't help but raise an eyebrow, it seems Itachi did more research than he expected in the short period of time they didn't see each other. In any case, just do your part with Abito and check on Sasuke so everything will be fine. Danzo was already exposed, Sarutobi died, and the two counselors are imprisoned. Tsunade also agreed to have him return. If after finding out the truth of what happened she can't put it aside and attacks the innocent people of Kanoha, all of this will have been for nothing. Are you going to tell me now why you are so intent on Zetsu? Tony shrugged his shoulders and explained what was already known to Tsunade and the rest of the villages. We are nothing but puppets to free his mother on the moon, it really seems like a children's story Itachi reflected, because there was no reason why Tony would lie to him at this point, not after healing him are you sure about Abito? Yes, his mind was broken and twisted by the real Madara. I won't ask you to eliminate another Uchiha, it's enough if you manage to do what I asked you to stop him from being a threat. Abito's Kamui was too annoying for Tony and he wanted Itachi to destroy it, or to be more precise, destroy his remaining Sharingan. Abito is a nobody without his dimensional trick and the body modification he received. Worst of all, whenever he sees that he is cornered or about to be defeated, he can use it to escape and come back later with an even crazier plan. Even Black Zetsu isn't that annoying. Hmm, Itachi nodded, what news do you have about Sasuke? As you may know, he ran away with Orochimaru. Naruto and his team will soon be leaving for a meeting with a spy that Sasori put next to Orochimaru, which I don't think will end well at all. If you follow them closely, they should discover a nearby base where he is currently. Do as you see fit from there. Itachi looked at him for a few seconds and faded away as the crows separated from his body. Tony was tempted to let Fenrir bite a few crows, to see what would happen but restrained himself. The next morning, he reported to Tsunade and discovered that Asuma along with some Kanoha ninja had gone on the trail about an attack on the fire temple. Since he knew that an encounter with Haydn and Kakuzu was imminent, he tried to think of how to neutralize them. Haydn was basically an immortal due to his cult of Jashin, which he also didn't fully understand how it worked even when recalling the series. Basically, his ritual consists of stabbing himself after licking the blood of his target while standing on the symbol of Jashin. So he needed to be sure that he didn't get his blood through any wounds. Then there was Kakuzu, who possessed a total of five hearts. One in the human body if it can still be called that and four more, spread among the four masks on his back, with one element in each. In other words, he has to eliminate it five times. 
The headache is with Haydn. The mission given to him by the system does not consist of defeating or sealing him, but clearly remarks that he must eliminate him for good. As for how dead he had to be, Tony remembered that even if only his head was left, he could still talk and curse even though he had no lungs, which to this day still has him baffled. So he needs to do something to fix it. Turn Haydn into a cracker and eat him? Yuck, to know how Jashin's energy could affect him. He doesn't find it appetizing at all. System, how do you determine if Haydn is dead enough? As long as he doesn't have a chance to recover, the system will give it as valid. Oh, then it's much simpler. He still had to tear the immortal to pieces or he could use the knockout, but knowing that condition, there were viable solutions within his reach. He eliminated time supplying some goods to his stores, checking on how his business branches were doing, and warning at home that he would be leaving at some point to support a mission. As he took in the view from one of the heads of the Hokage Monument, he burst into a cloud of smoke and disappeared. By the time the smoke cleared, his vision had shifted to a different place. Hey, what's up Choji? He greeted his fellow Akimichi clan member Shikamaru, Asuma, filler number one and two. Who are you calling filler? X2 they shouted in annoyance. Choji used a bottle containing an alchemy and performed the reverse force summoning, a method he wouldn't really use if it wasn't for being sure of his approximate time of encounter. Tony already warned him that he had a bad feeling and should use it in case he encountered an Akatsuki man carrying a strange red scythe, no delays. Has anyone been hurt by the devil worshipper? Tony asked sarcastically, but his gaze swept over everyone present looking for injuries. How dare you insult Jishinsuma? I've decided, I'll make you the next sacrifice while I wait for that greedy guy to get out. Oh, so Kakuzu is counting the money. Right. Hey, Tony, what's the plan? Shikamaru asked while not taking his eyes off Haydn. Since Tony was the one who brought the information from Akatsuki, he was also the best informed of everyone present. The plan is for you to cover my back, so that when his partner comes out, he won't ambush me by surprise, said Tony while stretching his muscles, you can attack from a distance, but using taijutsu against Haydn is no different from. I'm not going to let anyone else take care of that idiot after what he did to Chiriku. Asuma shouted angrily. Oh, I see. I guess. Kurinai's unborn child will grow up fatherless. Shouted Tony with a swollen vein in his neck. He really couldn't stand Asuma's stupidity. He tried, but his words are simply a red flag the size of a bell tower. Shikamaru and Choji's mouths dropped open at Tony's reaction. And Asuma was so shocked that his cigarette fell out of his mouth. I'll be clear, you piece of, either you withdraw on your own initiative or I'll knock you out first and tell Kurinai that you were trying to become a goddamn martyr. Are you going to be a responsible man or do you want to make her cry? You. Asuma felt like vomiting blood when he heard Tony's words. He was already upset enough with the death of his friend and now he was bringing up that topic, he really wanted to know what he was thinking. Choji and Shikamaru realized the critical information. Kurinai was pregnant and Asuma was the father. Even though they knew the two were in a relationship, they weren't even married yet. Hey! Stop ignoring me Haydn threw her red scythe towards Asuma with the intention of teaching him a lesson and the latter made a stance to try to hit her with his weapons. No, you don't. Tony stuck Asuma's back with chewing gum and pulled him out of the scythe's reach, are you even listening to me? No. Use. Taijutsu. Don't interfere, it's mine. Asuma shouted as he moodily threw the gum away, until he suddenly felt paralyzed Shikamaru. You're getting carried away by emotions said Shikamaru looking at him with sadness but determination while tying his shadow with his clan's technique Tony. He called. Summoning technique. Tony summoned alchemy and threw it over Asuma's head reverse summoning. No. Asuma tried to stop him, but vanished in a cloud of smoke when the space jutsu worked. Choji shook his head, even though he felt that his two friends' actions seemed correct. Don't worry, we'll go find Kurinai first, let's see if he dares to protest by then. Shikamaru had plans to confront Asuma on his own terms. TCH. I guess I'll have to settle for sacrificing you guys, Haydn complained as he retrieved the scythe by pulling the cable connected to his waist. We've got your back, Tony, said Shikamaru as he and Chijo got into position, Kotetsu. Izumo. Watch your surroundings please, you might get some backup if your partner sends out a warning signal. 
Oh, so the filler names 1 and 2 were Kotetsu and Izumo Tony thought after hearing that. It wasn't that he wanted to disrespect them before or anything, he really didn't remember their names, after all, the few times I remember seeing the Kanoha ninja duo was when they were guarding the village gates. Let's enjoy some pain together. Haydn shouted as he lunged at Tony with a fanatical look on his face. Tony pulled his two knives from his sleeves and in one motion, cut the three-pronged scythe into several pieces, leaving only a blunt blade in Haydn's hands. Damn it! Haydn complained looking at his damaged weapon with annoyance do you know how expensive it is to make this weapon? Kakuzu will lecture me again for having to use the organization's funds again. Haydn threw down the now useless weapon and pulled out a black iron folding fist as he tried to attack again. Tony slammed his fist into the ground and a wave of mud rose up towards Haydn. Do you think a little mud can stop me? Haydn laughed as he tried to move the mud away. The mud changed color to a reddish hue and the temperature rose abruptly. What the hell? Haydn looked surprised at the change in the enemy attack, isn't that the Yanbi's technique? He said before the magma covered him. Is it over? Choji asked. I don't think so, Tony hasn't relaxed yet at least denied Shikamaru, as he considered how he could try to help defeat this Akatsuki member. Haydn's figure was revealed with burns all over his body that began to heal at a visible rate. This pain is nothing. Haydn said as he looked at Tony, Jishinsama won't be satisfied by something so small and I don't want to lose his favor. Come on, fight like a man. Yeah, I guess it wasn't going to be that simple if burying him in magma was enough to hurt him, he wouldn't be part of Akatsuki's zombie duo I'd better hurry or Kakuzu will finish counting the money. Tony's initial plan was to use the breath of him to finish Haydn, but after the clarification he got from the system, he had a somewhat different plan in mind. He summoned several arm-thick snakes and as Haydn tried to free himself from their restraint, he began to cut off his leg, his arm. In short, he reduced Haydn to tiny pieces. As for the snakes. They were of the common type and didn't even have wisdom, so he had no remorse in cutting them at the same time as Haydn even if they were his summonings. At most he would barbecue some snake meat later, it's been a while since he prepared any. Do you think this will be enough to stop me? You have no idea how much power the great Jishinsama possesses. You can't eliminate me, shouted Haydn's head between the different pieces of his body, when I'm mounted again, I'll give you an especially painful death. What's going on? A foreign voice emerged from the building next to the fight and a man with a mask covering his face except for his eyes in a black robe with red clouds stepped forward. It's about time, you greedy idiot, why do you always have to count the money every time you redeem a reward? Haydn protested, rolling his eyes in the direction of the voice as he could not take the initiative to turn his neck in his state. Shut up! Kakuzu shouted at Haydn, you're a pain in the ass. I've told you many times to always check payment, I won't accept less than promised for my effort. Just ride me again, it's awkward to talk like this. Kakuzu, isn't it? Tony interrupted their talk of companionship. You know me. Kakuzu looked away from Haydn and observed Tony Emin, I don't remember your image from any reward poster. I offer you five million if you ignore Haydn while dealing with him. Five million? Kakuzu felt a little offended by the offer at least ten million and it has to be cash payment and immediate. Deal Tony took out a suitcase with money in it and threw it to Kakuzu, who reached out his arm and held it gingerly until he opened it and saw the real money inside. Hey, Kakuzu, you can't do that, Haydn shouted angrily as he watched them negotiate as if it was the most normal thing in the world. Get rid of you and your religious antics at the same time I get some money. From my point of view, it's pure profit, Kakuzu commented in a more cheerful tone as he counted the money, I hope my next partner gets a decent bounty on his head. Choji and Shikamaru watched the exchange and their gaze alternated between the three actors. The information Tony brought specified that this guy, Kakuzu, is obsessed with money, but seeing it with their own eyes was truly eye-opening. Tony approached Haydn's remains and held his head by his hair, ignoring his curses and complaints. Summoning Technique a puff of smoke erupted beside Tony and a humanoid figure with feline features appeared beside him, looking around with interest. Everyone present felt goosebumps rise on their skin for some reason. What business do you have with me, contractor? He asked in his feminine voice. I have something I think you might be quite interested in, Neferpatu. Remember that you can read the original version before from my Patreon. Is that so, Naya? 
Neferpetu looked curiously at the severed head that kept cursing his contractors several generations past. Yes, I'm going to give it to you along with the rest of his body Tony pointed to Haydn's remaining pieces beside him I may need you to help me with something in a while, is that enough for you to consider it a proper retainer? I will provide you with the rest once I finish the business I called you for, as much food as you deem necessary. I've gotten some good stuff recently that I think you'll be very pleased with. Em, it will be interesting to study this singularity Neferpeta took the head and turned it around, playing with it while juggling and poking it with his nails in several places, causing Haydn's vocal cords to become paralyzed and his eyes to become bloodshot I'll take it, call me when the time is right, Naya. In fact, do you want me to help you now for a bit? Kakuzu flinched as Neferpetu's gaze sharpened in her direction, like a cat that has seen a new toy. Because he had a terrible premonition with this summoned creature. He even stopped counting money for a moment. Strange. He didn't look very strong with his thin physique. You noticed its uniqueness at a glance and you want it for study too, right? Tony raised his eyebrow and commented, not being fooled. If it were that easy to mobilize the Chimera Ant Royal Guards, he'd be using them a lot more often. But they were terribly picky about their payments. Naya. I don't know what you're talking about. Neferpetu's ears twitched a couple of times as she averted her gaze, feigning amused non-understanding. Tony sighed, he was pretty sure that if it wasn't for his role as a contractor, he would have acted however he wanted to buy now. How about this? Tony proposed, take it too if you want, but that will count as additional payment for another time. Mm. Neferpetu's tail wagged behind her a couple of times as she thought deal. Hey! Kakuzu was annoyed after listening to their conversation. You think because I accept your money I'm easy? Don't confuse the two issues. I haven't left the nest in a while, so let's try to have a good time if Erpitu lifted one leg and left her arms at shoulder height let's go dance Terpsikra. Tony looked at her quizzically as he stepped back next to Shikamaru and Choji. Let's go dancing. Did you meet Madara in the past and did you catch his famous phrase? Hey, Choji, are you okay? Shikamaru noticed that Choji was very pale and shaking, sweating a lot. Oh, I completely forgot, Tony became aware of Choji's condition and understood what was going on. Choji's gourmet cells must have been screaming for him to run away with all his might, from the moment Neferpeta activated his ability. As the contractor, Tony was familiar with his summonings and was not as affected because his own gourmet cells were already quite evolved. But forget Choji. Any ninja with the sensory specialty would have possibly fainted frothing at the mouth upon sensing the royal guardian's aura. Actually, that Choji managed to resist that impulse is already very impressive. Take some chocolate, it'll help you calm down tearing off a piece of wall from the nearby building and turning it into premium chocolate, he offered it to Choji. Thank you. Choji took the basketball's eyes chocolate and was calming down a bit after biting several times. Your summoned beast will be able to. Tony covered Shikamaru's mouth with his palm before he could complete his question. Believe me, he will have no problem taking care of Kakuzu, he assured as he looked at him and shook his head, conveying not to say anything like that again. The reason why he interrupted Shikamaru, is because the jonin had quite possibly misunderstood Neferpetu's character. Even as a contractor, he had to act appropriately with the royal guardians and their seemingly casual interaction was the result of meeting each other already a few times before along with the fact that Tony had a general idea of their personalities. Do you think they'll let it pass for a human to belittle them even if he's an ally? Maybe he had just saved Shikamaru's life, preventing him from becoming a meatball. Shikamaru understood that he seemed to have said something wrong and waved Tony's hand away, turning his attention to the fight. With a leap, Neferpeta stabbed his foot into Kakuzu's back in hopes of neutralizing him with as little damage as possible, facilitating his further study. Kakuzu's robe could not survive the blow and his physique with the stitched masks was revealed, of which one of them was broken, blue in color. Naya. I'm sure I pierced a heart, but you're still alive, Neferpetu looked with interest at the masks and the seams on Kakuzu's body as he performed a backflip to walk away, did we meet before? That sounds a bit like my Dr. Blythe's work. I didn't expect to lose a heart so soon Kakuzu looked annoyed, because the water heart he had before being destroyed by Neferpetu was one with an unusual quality. He released his other masks and soon, creatures made of black filaments came out of his body. Are you familiar with a kite? Neferpetu suddenly asked as she remembered the last toy she had, genuinely interested in the answer. How should I know? 
asked Kakuzu as he set one of the creatures guarding the spectators aside and used the ones with the fire and wind masks acting at the same time do you have any idea what my age is? A flare rushed out from one of the masks and was amplified by the wind current of the other, generating a wide-ranging, high-powered attack. Do you have a heart in each of those things? I can hear the heartbeat inside them. How long can each heart last? Do you need to meet any special requirements? Neferpita moved at great speed and stabbed with his hand using his claws, sinking his arm to the elbow and destroying the creature with the yellow mask that had stayed out of the fight. It could be seen as it held a damaged heart in between its fingers, to which it had still connected some strands of chakra. You! Kakuzu didn't expect his opponent to completely ignore both him and the masks he had in combat and instead attack the one he was using to stand guard. He decided to get serious against the strange humanoid cat, she was more dangerous than he had initially estimated. He reabsorbed the two remaining masks and the seams of his arms, back and mouth burst, revealing his final form as any boss in an RPG would. Tony held back his urge to laugh. Did he really not realize that Neferpatu is just messing with him? That was refreshing, commented Neferpatu while using Dr. Blythe to perform first aid on Kakuzu after playing with him for two hours, don't be in a hurry to die, there are many things I can only test when you're still alive. Kakuzu was lying on his back, with traces of his masks next to his head, his right leg was missing and his left arm was currently being sewn back together. Just eliminate me once. He said in a hoarse voice. Later. Maybe. Neferpita turned to his contractor, who had long since handed out popcorn and refreshments to everyone to admire the dance in front of them, it's been entertaining, but I should get back now. Oh. Before I left, Yuppie kept complaining that he wants to eat your food again. It's starting to overwhelm Poof, so remember to call him if there's an opportunity. Bye. Neferpita disappeared in another puff of smoke along with the remains of Akatsuki's zombie duo. Ugh, Yuppie again. He eats more than the entire Akimichi clan put together. Tony muttered rubbing his forehead with his hand, before realizing a detail oh, she took Akatsuki's rings with her too. Never mind, Tony shrugged and checked the mission to see if his actions were enough to fulfill the necessary condition. Mission Eliminate Akatsuki's Immortals Task Haydn and Kakuzu have hunted many people to collect their bounties and fund the Akatsuki organization. Among their victims are ninjas who were also outstanding cooks or new delicious special recipes passed down from generation to generation that will never see the light of day again. Unforgivable. Eliminate Haydn completed. Eliminate Kakuzu completed. Reward change of flavor Toriko carbonated rain technique. Reward will be given once the host returns to the leaf village. Is there any particular reason why I need to wait to return to the village? I mean, I'd rather try the carbonated rain technique here, in the middle of nowhere, than in the village, where Tsunade will chase me for hours if I leave the streets all sticky and it wouldn't be good publicity for my business. Minor mistake found. Handing out mission rewards. That's better, nodded Tony satisfied system, show me my status. Status. Name Gluttony, nicknamed Tony. Current world Naruto. Partner Tayuya. Ability Devil Fruit Kuku Kuku no Mi no Weakness Breath of N Transform Tomatoes into Magma Modified Turkey Live Dolls Technique Pearl Jam Jojo Knocking Toriko Sound Bazooka Toriko Zebra Flavor Change Toriko Carbonated Rain Technique. Weapons Dragon King Dirouse's Twin Knives. Traits Gourmet Cells Awakened Gourmet Demon Homunculus of Gluttony Summoning Contract Chimera Ants Alchemy Forest of Gluttony Ryuchi Cave Chocobo Description A Jonin known far and wide for being the owner of the successful cuckoo chain of stores and his bizarre gourmet ninja techniques. His body contains fully active gourmet cells and the gourmet demon has been successfully awakened, allowing for additional traits. He possesses the uncanny ability to transform things into food, including living things if he sets his mind to it. It is on its way to becoming the top of the food chain in this world. And to think it's been so long already, melancholy gripped Tony for a few seconds, it's getting closer to the end of this whole mess. While he still had to take care of Abito, Zetsu and Nagato, he hoped he could finish the conspiracy before Madara's rebirth and Kagaya's appearance. Now that I think about it, I should have told Itachi to eliminate Kabuto while I was following Naruto to the bridge. Well, there's no use crying over spilled milk and I don't know for sure if he'd listen to me either, he shook his head and tried to focus on the current timeline, let's see. Now. 
Is it still the moment when Jiraiya infiltrates Amige Cure? But with what I discussed with Tsunade. Tony had a feeling he was missing something. Wait. Tsunade got the information from Akatsuki and sent it to the other four major villages to take the necessary measures, they are now better informed than in the original timeline. Jiraiya has a fairly extensive spy network, so even if Tsunade puts off telling him that the three orphans she helped at the time are involved, perhaps he will find out on his own upon learning the names or seeing the photos and move without telling anyone, believing it to be a purely personal matter. What were the chances of it actually happening? Knowing Jiraiya. Too high. Funny, he left Naruto at the mercy of the village for his entire childhood, but spent more effort on three random orphans so he could manage his conscience, than taking care of Minato's son. That reminds me, I haven't visited Kakashi, has he heard about Abito yet? Tony. Shikamaru called him for the fourth time. Hey. I said, we should go, Shikamaru repeated, Asuma sensei I must be going crazy and it's better if he finds out about the situation. Sure, let me try one thing and we can go. Fifteen minutes later. It's strange to see cola drink raining down, Shikamaru commented as they all rode back to the village on Chocobos. More like a dream. Remarked Choji, who was holding a pitcher with which he collected some of the liquid when Tony tried the carbonated rain technique. He happily took a sip as the road became smoother and less tumultuous. Again, why don't you use those sweet creatures so we can return to the village immediately? Shikamaru asked. It wasn't that he would complain about discomfort, the feathers from this big yellow bird would actually make a great pillow in his opinion. Maybe he should try ordering some later. Relax, you said it took you five hours to track and catch up with those two. With these little guys, I assure you will be back in Kanoha in less than half an hour. They're fast, no doubt. Commented Filler too. Damn, Tony forgot their names again. Were they so easily forgettable or did he just not give them the slightest importance? Half an hour later. Quickly, we have to go and find Kurinai, said Shikamaru once they returned to the village I'm not going to face Asuma Sensei's questions without his deterrent presence, it would be too much trouble. I'll go inform Tsunade of what happened Tony said goodbye. Phil 1 and 2 looked at each other. And what do they do? Never mind, just go take a nap until it's their turn to watch the gate. Tony jumped over the rooftops and hurried to file a factual report. So Akatsuki has lost two more members, well done, nodded Tsunade satisfied, I'll warn the other villages that there will be fewer targets to watch out for in the future. Tsunade, do you know where Jiraiya is right now? Tony asked, he wanted to make sure that Jiraiya wasn't going to ruin everything. Jiraiya? He took his leave an hour ago, saying he was going to look for more inspiration for that book of his in the Land of Rain, Tsunade snorted, since I ordered to put a roof on the hot springs in Kanoha, he hasn't been able to follow his usual practices. Has he left the village? Tony repeated, to the Land of Rain. Yes. Tsunade suddenly opened her eyes you don't think that. Tony nodded with a dark face, he didn't have the slightest doubt about it. That idiot had left for Amage Cure with the intention of reasoning with his former disciples. He had intended to rest for a couple of days before setting out, believing he had plenty of time, but now he would have to greatly accelerate his plans. Ding! A new mission has been issued. Tony could almost guess what the mission was going to consist of, as he appeared at the moment he found out that Jiraiya had left the village and was on his way to his death. Mission God is looking down on you with arrogance, so. Poke his eyes out and fry them in oil. Task Nagato has been led by the nose from the start and traumatized by the death of his friend, lives using borrowed power that doesn't belong to him and is now preparing for a big move against Kanoha in advance, due to the pressure resulting from his organization's information being compromised. Killing Jiraiya will only harden his resolve and that of those who follow him. A god. He's just a child delirious at the prospect of fulfilling a beautiful dream, it's time to wake him up. Obtain for yourself or destroy the Rinnegan uncompleted. Reward release of wood edible grimoire of food black clover. Penalty for failure Jiraiya's death unavoidable attack on Kanoha happens, causing thousands of dead and immeasurable damage. Okay, it looks like he won't have to save Jiraiya, at least, not actively. System, why is there a penalty? There was nothing like this before. Before adding and the name of the mission this time is grotesque. Responding to the host. Although it is called a penalty, 
in reality it would only be the original course of things resuming their course. In other circumstances there were too many variables, but in this particular situation, it is a given that if there is no success, happen as described. I see. Why is it remarked that the release of wood will be edible? The wood cannot be digested because of the cellulose it contains, did you make a mistake? There is no mistake. The wood release provided by the system refers to a specific wood called yakaracea, the only one in the world that has no cellulose and is therefore edible. It contains 90% moisture and once cut, it rots quickly if not treated in a special way within 24 hours. Are you sure it won't be a problem? I still can't believe that the wood could actually be edible. The system would not provide anything harmful to the host. This edible wood is suitable for celiacs, it contains minerals that help the physiology of the human body, it has a certain magnesium content that helps the muscular system, potassium favors the functioning of the cardiovascular system, calcium helps the bones and fiber is useful for the intestinal function. Besides, the flavor is changeable since each yakaracea is different. Even after reading all the information, it wasn't something Tony found desirable really. Since the wood rots so quickly, it means he can't build anything with that wood to last beyond a day. Frankly, getting the normal wood release would be much more useful and appealing than this very rare edible variant. This was one of the few occasions when I preferred to get something nundable. Tsunade, I'm leaving for Amage Cure immediately. Tony told her confidently. Tsunade meant that it wasn't necessary, after all, as Jiraiya's partner since young she knows the level of strength he has as a San Nin. But it was also true that Jiraiya's move could stir the situation to a point of no return, all due to the pervert sage's deception coupled with his carelessness due to the large amount of paperwork he has been overseeing lately in preparation for Payne's attack. Do you need reinforcements? I was hoping to get Jiraiya back before he did something crazy, but Tony's priority was never that pervert. No, Tony denied, though he could sound arrogant, taking people with him would only slow him down too much on this occasion, I'll stop by the house to pick up Fenrir and leave right away. But if I need you to make it an official mission, maybe then, Jiraiya will give in to his stubborn intent. What he really wanted was the Hokage's order so that if later, Jiraiya shows up during his confrontation with Nagato, he would have some way to suppress it. After all, he was a Kanoha ninja who once threatened to eliminate Tsunade if he ever betrayed the village, so that order should keep him in his place like a good trained dog. If he insisted on meddling and doing things his way. He'll just pretend to retreat, let his downfall occur and then resume the fight as if he never showed up. He could say he died in combat. Although his death would affect Tsunade, Naruto and others, he didn't have much closeness and he wasn't going to risk it for a person like him. He didn't deserve it. For Tony, saving Jiraiya's life was only something convenient because he wanted to spare his acquaintances and friends anguish. Nothing more. Okay. Tsunade took a blank scroll where she wrote everything quickly and stood up from her chair behind the Hokage's table, proclaiming while extending her hand with the freshly prepared scroll, Tony Akimichi, as Hokage of Kanoha, I command you handle the situation in Amage Cure according to the circumstances as you see fit in your judgment, for the benefit of the village as the top priority. This is an strength mission. Understood. Tony made the formal gesture and checked the contents on the spot, making sure nothing annoying like giving priority to Jiraiya's life was mentioned. After nodding inwardly satisfied, he left the office without wasting any time and returned home to pick up Fenrir. Another reason why he disliked the use of reverse summoning without warning, he could only be summoned by that method, even if his battle wolf was hiding in his shadow. It seems Tayuya went out at some point and wasn't home, but Tony was able to meet his little sister and explain the situation as he prepared to leave. Should I make preparations for the attack? Karen asked. They've had an emergency backpack prepared with everything they need for a while now. Wait for Tayuya to return and both of you stay alert. Use your ability as a sensor along with her infernal hearing and you should be able to act in time, nodded Tony, preferring them to be prepared in case something goes wrong, while the mission I'll be doing should solve the problem, you never know what obstacles may arise along the way. I don't know what will happen if my target gets away. Okay, be careful. Tony was about to walk out the door, when suddenly something occurred to him and he turned around. By any chance, do we have any branches in Amagakure or somewhere else in the rain country? He asked Karen with doubt in his voice. 
Given the current size of his business, it was impossible for him to manage everything by himself and from time to time, Karen would give him a hand and he also opened some branches in places he considered potential without asking her permission. He now had so many branches that he wouldn't remember them all if he didn't consult the list of records. In fact, we have one in Amage Cure for eight months now, but it has been performing ordinarily all this time Karen thought about it for a moment and replied with a shrug. When he means ordinary, he means that it has had a fairly normal turnover and if it wasn't for Tony's food having an original cost of zero, it would be closed by now. Well, that saves me a rush trip, Tony sighed in relief and sat down at the dining room table, tell me where the store is located and its surroundings. The village of Amigaycure was known for the very phenomenon that gave it its name, a constant and endless rain to which its inhabitants had become accustomed generations ago. Even the equipment of the ninjas had been adapted to masks that allow them to breathe properly in this environment and umbrellas. Despite being a small village, it was highly industrialized and it was difficult to look in any direction and not see pipes. Some acted to redirect water, others carried supplies to factories and some were even used as secret passageways. While this rain was natural, Tony knew that after the death of Hanzo the Salamander, the rain was the result of a jutsu whose name he did not remember and which was cast by one of Nagato's puppets. Using the rain as a medium, he could monitor any intruder who would try to infiltrate the village. In fact, it was because Jiraiya didn't know he needed to protect himself from the rain that he was so quickly detected among other things. So this is Amigakure Tony opened the door of the store once he used reverse summoning to get to his branch and looked out without stepping over the threshold and letting the rain outside touch him the weather is really humid, it must be a nightmare to be an old person in this place, bones and joints must be constantly protesting. The cold when it's winter must not help either. Finishing eating the pear with ramun juices he was holding, he wiped the juice off his hands and closed the door to the store. He would undoubtedly be detected in the next few moments, but he didn't care. He already took measures so that even if the store was destroyed it wouldn't affect anything important and he should have enough time to act before Jiraiya arrived at the village. Summoning Technique When you said you'd need me soon, I didn't expect it to be so soon, Nyana Furpadu came out of the smoke while his hands were bloody holding a scalpel I was just trying out some things with my new toys. He put the scalpel away and took a towel from the store, slowly wiping the blood away. Shall we eat something before we start? Yuppie looked around and seeing all the food in the store, he picked up some fruit and threw it in his mouth, chewing happily. Sure, eat whatever you want from the store while I explain why I called you. You see. Yuppie, no. I have told you several times that alchemy is not to be eaten. Don't be so literal. Warned Tony. Yuppie agreed with obvious reluctance and lowered the trembling alchemy to the table, where he made cream. Tony sighed inwardly. Yuppie is the least humanoid of the royal guard but he is the most outspoken and direct. His skin is reddish, he has irregularly shaped ears and legs with very sharp teeth, similar to Kisame's. His hair is short brown and he has black fur instead of pants. Yes, Yuppie is not only the tallest of the royal guards, but he is the only one of the three who never wears clothes. So what's it all about this time? Yuppie asked as Neferpidu also picked up a few things while listening on the side. Tony's main target was of course, the Rinnegan. But it would be a pain in the ass to have to deal with Nagato, his six-way puppets, Conan and his collection of explosive tags and he also didn't know if there was another Akatsuki member present at the time. Yuppie would be in charge of dealing with the six-way puppets, so he explained what he remembered about it. What they look like with the color of their hair and their eyes, how they shared vision with each other, the abilities of each according to the hairstyle they have, the metal chakra rods on their bodies, etc. In addition, he also made it clear that he could let loose as much as he wanted, it wasn't a problem that he would knock down some buildings during the fight if necessary. Something that seemed to please Yuppie immensely, after all, it was so annoying to have to hold back. Neferpitu was assigned for Nagato's eyes. Although Tony believed he could take on Nagato to a certain extent, the truth was that he didn't want to complicate things too much and Neferpitu was much more qualified to move stealthily and assault the eyes at the slightest opportunity. But Tony's instructions were clear, the destruction of the eyes he possessed was the priority. If she had to eliminate him to do so, she didn't have to stop. Although the system's mission gave a choice between obtaining or destroying the Rinnegan, Tony preferred to destroy it from the start. And the reason was simple, there were only a couple of those eyes in the world and eliminating them would prove more in line with his goals than not trying to use them. 
Sure, Sasuke could develop others or even Itachi later on, but he would see if it was necessary to deal with them once Black Zetsu was handled. I mean, look what they did to Nagato. He had the recovery of an Uzumaki and still ended up being skin and bones. Sure, maybe it had to do with him actively using them, but Tony didn't feel any need to change his eyes. He liked the ones he had, even if they didn't have any OP powers. In fact, he felt that the protagonists of those fanfics who didn't hesitate to gouge out their eyes and use other ones as if they had nothing, had a screw loose in their head. Where was it? Right, while Yuppie was taking care of the puppets and the Furpidu was dealing with Nagato, the target Tony had was Conan. He would get the angel away from Nagato so Neferpidu could perform and at the same time, he was the best opponent for him. Conan used paper ninjutsu almost 100% of the time and Tony could use his magma tomato transformation to destroy them. He could soak them with olive oil and ignite them, stick them with chewing gum, dissolve them with vinegar, and so on. In other words, there was water everywhere, so Tony had no shortage of raw materials for transformation with his devil fruit. He was simply his best opponent and knew the secret of his stash of explosive papers, so he would be in guard if the worst possible situation came to pass. But. The truth was that Tony intended to use something different against Conan, which he had not yet been able to use against any enemy and which would be highly convenient if it comes to work as he thought it should. That's the plan, any questions? Nah, I'm good. Find and charge the six you said, clear and direct Yuppie could fight and get a good meal, that was good enough for him. Can I keep the puppets when Yuppie is done with them? Well, in case there's anything left. Ask Neferpitu. Sure, just leave me some metal chakra rods they have for me, I'll recycle them to make something I have in mind once the Rinnegan is destroyed, the puppets would be reduced to the state of some modified bodies with little interest for Tony. He had no reason to deny Neferpitu's interest in them. Let's get started, then, Tony opened the tent door and raised his hands to the sky and said, gluttony carbonated rain technique. Under the stupefied gaze of all Amage Cure, the rain they all knew turned dark and sweet-smelling. The change was abrupt, but the Amage Cure ninja quickly confirmed that there was no poison or drug contained in the strange rain. It was more like it had suddenly turned into some kind of refreshment under unknown conditions, a rather tasty one. Nagato, what's happening to the rain? Conan asked after materializing half of his face with paper next to a thin red-haired man with several metal bars of chakra sticking out of his back, are you all right? You should rest. It's not me the man raised his head, revealing between his bangs a pair of circled, purple eyes someone has interfered with the control of my jutsu, changing it in a strange way. I've tried, but I can't cancel the effects of the jutsu until it's finished. Intruders? Conan raised his eyebrow, understanding that they were being attacked by someone how many squads did you feel? That's the strange thing, I only sense three anomalies Nagato answered as he remembered carefully two of them don't even look human, but they certainly have the strength of a jonin at the very least. No, maybe they'll make it to Sudokage. And the third one? Human and ninja, no doubt. The feedback from the jutsu is strange, it's as if their body has some kind of secret that I don't understand. How do we deal with them? Mm Nagato ponders for a moment I'll send the pains to search for and attack the biggest threats, go after the intruding ninja and try to capture him alive quickly, then go reinforce the pains. Later I'll get information out of his head with a genjutsu. Okay, Conan nodded and dispersed in a cloud of paper butterflies. A few minutes after Conan left, Nagato frowned. One of them disappeared. The two threats he felt were reduced to a single presence perhaps it sensed something and retreated? It was probably some kind of sensory creature. Too bad, it could have been a nice addition to my path of beasts. Somewhere in Amage Cure. What took you so long to arrive? Asked Yuppie annoyed at having to wait for the appearance of two pains one with long hair and one with spikes on his head. Hey, are you underestimating me? He started to get angry when he saw the few opponents brought by the other party you should bring the rest, or do you want to avoid damaging your childhood friend's body? That would be quite hypocritical, considering how you're using his corpse, don't you think? The two pains narrowed their eyes as they looked at the red creature in front of them. Does it look like the leaked information is much more detailed than they expected? Even within Akatsuki, what they know of their abilities and about the pains are few. Looks like I have to give you a good beating if I want you to take me seriously Yuppie started to transform, getting several extra arms and multiple eyes come on. At the foot of Amage Cure's tallest tower. 
So the boy with the weird eyes is at the top. Neferpeta moved gracefully and without causing any sound while climbing the effects of this rain are interesting he thought while licking a drop that fell on his lips tasty, I think Poof would like this drink. Too bad he doesn't like to go out. In another place further away from Amigecure. Tony was taking what looked like a detour through a hidden path to get to one of the Amigecure offices, where different important documents are kept. His real goal was to get far enough away so that everyone could do their part without interruption. During his infiltration, he already finished off a dozen Amigecure ninjas and took off the surroundings. Who's there? He stopped on top of one of the pipes and looked around. Paper butterflies converged in front of him, revealing a Conan who spread wings behind his back. I take it you're the angel everyone in Amigecure is talking about, Tony said in an attempt to appear ignorant. Knowing too much could make Conan suspicious and being someone smart, he wouldn't hesitate to back off if he found something wrong with the situation. You shouldn't have entered our domain, said Conan while looking at him from a high position, which annoyed Tony a little bit, who sent you. Tony was going to keep talking, but changed his expression and jumped into a different pipe. When he turned around, he realized that the pipe where he was standing was actually a pipe made by origami and almost caught his feet. Damn, that paper technique is better than I expected, thought Tony. He noticed that despite the mellow cola rain, the paper didn't get soaked and other than being a little slower, it didn't really seem affected. Did he give each of those papers a hydrophobic treatment? How crazy! Conan watched expressionlessly as his surprise attack failed. If it was that simple, he doubted his intervention would be necessary. He began throwing several paper shuriken and tried to overpower Tony, looking for an opportunity to encase him in a paper cocoon. Tony saw the shurikens approaching and with a kick, broke the cover of the pipe and water gushed out of it, which turned into pressurized tomato sauce and later into magma under its active change. Magma release Conan blinked somewhat in surprise as she turned away from the lumps of magma flying in her direction is it Iwagakure or Kirigakure? This is problematic. Amigakure's environment greatly restricts a style like this, but at the same time, most of Conan's techniques couldn't stand up to something like this. His papers were resistant to water and even oil, but they would be incinerated no matter how much he used. Using explosive seals wasn't a good idea either, as the magma splashes could turn into dangerous shrapnel for her. Let's retreat first, Conan thought as she began to switch to paper to disperse. Tony saw this and realized that his plan was too optimistic, looks like he needed to resort to plan B. Summoning Technique Storm Snakes Gluttony Golden Bird Cage Conan didn't look away from Tony and dodged the golden threads that suddenly shot out of the enemy's hand, while the strange snakes that had lightning around them scattered. Do you have two different styles? Conan was somewhat confused, but she could reflect after she left. But the threads she evaded were never meant to hit her and when they gained a little height, they opened up and formed a dome of threads, enclosing Conan inside. The snakes Tony summoned were outside the dome and bit into the threads, successfully electrifying the trap. Tony sighed with relief when he saw that the paper butterflies could not get out once the trap was closed, as they were incinerated by the high voltage of the wires. This was a technique he imitated from Doflamingo and it proved to be a success. He used edible gold for the threads and the snakes were from the Ryuichi cave, a type of snake that liked to swim in electricity. It was strange, but remembering the strange toads that existed on Mount Mayaboku. Who says Ryuichi cave doesn't have its own oddities? Conan was trapped contrary to her expectations. According to her analysis, the dome of threads not only covered the sky, but went quite deep into the waters below. The explosive seals were not causing enough damage to open an opening through which to escape, and the only way out seemed to be to defeat the intruder and dispel the jutsu. Tony narrowed his eyes, seeing Conan's thoughts from the start. But he wasn't going to give him time to do anything, he couldn't risk him using the jutsu god paper person. Even though he used it outside of Amigecure in the series, those were no less than 600 billion exploding papers. Enough to explode continuously for at least 10 minutes uninterrupted. Fenrir. Tony called out. To Conan's complete surprise, who showed by opening her eyes wide being expressive for the first time in the fight, a huge dark wolf came out of Tony's shadow. How many meters was that thing? Even the multi-headed dog Nagato had was not comparable to what he was looking at right now. Fenrir looked at Conan, sniffed in his direction and Conan lost consciousness, rushing into the stream below. 
Fenrir jumped up and held Conan in his jaws, carrying her safely to Tony and leaving her right in front of him. After verifying that she was indeed unconscious and would take time to wake up, he pulled out the Diraus knives and concentrated. A strange purple aura began to flow from the knives and immediately Tony used them to slash Conan several times. Gluttony flavor change. That's right, Tony wasn't brutally torturing anyone, but he used Joa's dark cooking technique on Conan, leaving some inconspicuous scars instead of wounds. He thought that one cut would be enough, but according to the system, Conan was a rather strong-willed woman and therefore, he would need to perform more for the effect of the flavor change to work successfully and permanently. Is that enough, system? Asked Tony somewhat uneasily. He made cuts on the soles of her feet and under her armpits, a total of eight cuts, being two crosswise in each place. Even if Conan herself was looking for scars on his body, it's hard to say if she would notice them. What, maybe he was getting her on his side, but they had no intention of disfiguring her. Conan administered Amigecure since Akatsuki took over, not Nagato or anyone else. That reveals her terrifying management skills and he intended to put her to work at the Cuckoo chain store as CEO or something. I'd make her have a good life. Affirmative, Conan's loyalty has successfully changed the host irreversibly. Tony sighed in relief when he heard that, because he didn't know where else to cut without affecting her too much. He cancelled the gold dome and sent back the snakes after getting confirmation. In his opinion, Conan was in a sense like Hermione. A great talent and huge potential, ruined in the end by some decisions. If in Hermione's case her downfall was because of Ron Weasley, then Conan fell when she followed Nagato's god delusions and didn't try to confront him to make him see reality. Fortunately, everything went well and it wouldn't be necessary to eliminate her. He felt quite sad when he saw her fall during her fight against Abito. Moreover, if Jiraiya ever incurs him, he would make sure Conan would say some words to him harsh enough to make that perverted man cry and make him seriously doubt his life. Maybe then he'll grow up once and for all. He wasn't worried about Jiraiya feeling that there was something wrong with his student either. After all the years that had passed, the strange thing would be if he hadn't changed at all. He could make up something like how they met long ago during their expansion of stores in the other major villages and Conan, convinced by his unmatched charisma and charm, became his spy. With Nagato and Yahiko's relationship, maybe Jiraiya has a lot of doubts or doesn't believe him at all, but without proof, he could go and shove his theories up a toad's ass. Since Jiraiya will be here later, he'll have a good discussion with Conan so he won't find loopholes once he wakes up. Wait a minute Tony realized something Amigekyur considers Conan their guardian angel and he's on my side now. Once I'm done with Nagato. Could I take over Amigekyur without lifting a finger? The thought could not be pushed aside once it arose. Sure, I had plenty of stores, money and influence to a certain extent. But to have an entire village hidden away as his private force. Tempting. But it could also be very problematic, especially if conflicts with other villages broke out later. It is clear that Conan cannot be considered a strong enough deterrent as Hanzo was in the past. Better let him go, if he would seek power, then he would not have decided to destroy the Rinnegan. As for the people of Amigecure, they are not his problem. In fact, they are hardly his customers from what Karen said, so they could fend for themselves if he decides to leave the Rain Village to its fate. Anyway, once he returns to Kanoha he will need to inform Tsunade that Conan was a spy of his. Maybe he'll have Conan file a restraining order against Jiraiya, just so that when he finds out, he'll feel like he's been kicked in the balls. Am I interrupting something? Neferpadu appeared while he was lost in his thoughts Naya. Wow, I didn't know you liked to play like that too, he commented after seeing the scars on Conan. It's not what you think. Tony jumped up. He didn't want anyone to think he was devious like Orochimaru. Of course, of course, don't worry. I'm so wrong although Neferpatu's words were clear, his tone and look didn't convey any kind of apology. Tony could only cover his face with his hands and shook his head. How did the Nagato thing end? I eliminated him, she commented as she sat down and swung her tail behind her, his perception was quite strong and he almost failed to catch him by surprise, I damaged the ligaments in my legs due to the force I had to use and had to heal afterwards, that's why it took me so long. So. Tony looked at her, waiting for more details. I cut off his head before he understood what was going on, I gouged out his eyes before crushing them like grapes and then, as you requested, 
his remains have been reduced to ashes to avoid leaving behind means of summoning, he pulled out several metal chakra rods that still had blood on the pointed end. Tony nodded, but still secretly examined the mission interface as they awaited Yuppie's arrival. Ding! The mission has been successfully accomplished. The rewards are being handed out. Reward would release edible food grimoire black clover pea thrower plants versus zombies. Tony's eyebrow couldn't help but twitch when he read the last reward. I understand the wood release from what the system explained to me and I think I remember something regarding the grimoire, but... Seriously, sniper launcher. It wasn't even the version with three or five heads with a high rate of fire, but the most basic or rather, classic, version of its kind what use can I get out of this thing? The most annoying part was that the reward was, quite literally, a sharpshooter. 1. Not a summoning contract or a technique to create them ironic, considering he had just gotten the wood release but he could just pull out one of these plants and transplant it. System, is this a mistake? No. The system is only allowed to deliver one specimen due to world restrictions, but the host should not underestimate the reward. It only needs a sunny place to survive and a shot from this plant has the same momentum and damage as a cannonball, being deadly to ordinary people. Tony frowned, but did not pull the plant out. Right now he was surrounded by metal and water, not to mention that Amigacure hadn't seen the sun in decades. Come to think of it, how could they not have gotten sick? So annoying. Yuppie joined them later I was just starting to get amused when they started bringing out strange beasts and suddenly, my prey stopped moving and collapsed, as if a puppet had had its strings cut, he complained do you know what happened? Neferpitu was staring at Conan's scars and Tony was examining Fenrir's fur, as if he found it very interesting. Yeah, I guess not Yuppie scratched the back of his head and held out his hand hey, contractor. I need to eat to get my bad mood out, hurry up and do your thing. Neferpitu turned and looked at Tony, clearly indicating that he was waiting for his share as well. What are you in the mood for today? Asked Tony as he looked around. Meat. Yuppie didn't hesitate. Many kinds of meat, with that thick brown sauce from last time. I want a big parfait, commented Neferpitu. Good. Fenrir, keep an eye on Conan while he prepared the food for them. The dark battle wolf growled. Yes, I know you have a sore nose from using your father's technique. I'm sorry, when I come back I'll give you something very delicious to eat, Tony said. The reason why Conan fainted was that Fenrir used the same technique on her that Guinness used on Tony during their confrontation in the Gourmet Coliseum. But due to their young age and insufficient strength, they were not at the same level at all and Fenrir could only knock someone unconscious for a few hours at most. Besides, his nose would be sore for a week. Tony jumped a few rooftops and when he found a tall enough tower, he stabbed it with the Dirouse knives and used his devil fruit power to transform the building and everything in it into a giant mound of flesh, all made of none other than jewel flesh. The smell and juices burst out of nowhere while a light radiated from the flesh. To top it off, he altered the rain around the meat and transformed it into Yorkshire sauce. Ha ha ha. Yuppie got excited when he saw the scene and began to transform, causing several additional mouths to appear all over his body this is what I was talking about. He jumped up and dove full body into the flesh building, starting to devour everything in his path without manners. This will keep him busy for a few hours commented Tony as he jumped up and walked away from the place do you have any special cravings for the parfait? He asked Neferpitu. Naya, I'm in the mood for something unfamiliar today. Surprise me. Tony sighed inwardly. If he didn't have an idea of this royal guard's tastes, he would be very worried. After all, there's nothing worse than someone who says surprise him with food and then refuses to eat when you show him the plate. After reaching another tower of a similar size to the one delivered to Yuppie, Tony stabbed at its surface again and this time he had to try a little harder. From the bottom up, the tower transformed into a giant colorful parfait. Since Tony couldn't create the glass of the cup, he replaces it with a huge cup of the same type of cookie that would be used for ice cream. The bottom of the parfait has a slightly tart berry compote topped with some strawberries and melted chocolate. A layer of Greek yogurt with banana chunks that has been sprinkled with crushed vanilla caramelized peanuts. On top you can see several types of assorted cookies stuck into the whipped cream, with a glistening cherry topping the meal. Also, the rain around them was completely stopped, as it could with the cookie and spoil the beautiful artwork before Neferpitu would start eating. Perfect, nice working with you. 
Neferpitu licked her lips as she restlessly wagged her tail behind her and after bending down for a few seconds to gather enough momentum, she jumped on top of the parfait to start eating. Tony sighed in relief that she had no complaints and had been able to keep both of them happy, more easily than expected. He wasn't worried that the Amagakure ninjas were going to bother them, if they want to die, just let them go. He returned to Fenrir and Conan. Seeing that the blue-haired Kunoichi was still out of action, Tony started cooking some special dishes to give to Fenrir to relieve the bad mood from having a sore nose. He was hungry too, so using his privilege as a chef, he stole two or three bites from each dish. The scenery of the falling rain and the aroma of the food blended into what could be a strange, but unexpectedly harmonious scene. Mm. Conan opened her eyelids slowly somewhat confused. She felt her head ache and the scent around her left her disoriented. What was wrong with her? She had the feeling that something in her perception was different, but she couldn't quite place it. You can read my work first and more by joining my Patreon. Link in my profile. Conan's attitude after her awakening and when she was aware of everything was rather Indifferent, apparently Tony severely underestimated the flavor change he used on her. He almost expected her to be some sort of unwilling puppet, but from anyone's point of view, she didn't really change at all. She was still herself, she still had opinion and will, abilities and beliefs, memories and interests. Just. Slightly changed. Nagato's death. That was worth a sigh from Conan, though Tony didn't know if it was relief, resignation, or something else. It was as if Tony had always been a place above Nagato and Yahiko in Conan's heart, unknown to herself until now. Since she did not treat Conan coldly and knew her past, she quickly approached Tony and in a few hours talking in the rain they managed to get to know each other very well. Conan sent some paper clones to reassure all of Amigakure as they talked, you could tell he really needed someone to talk to without cover or manipulation or the need to control information and lie. He just needed someone to talk to in complete confidence. As Tony found out, even Nagato refused to be a willing listener for her since Yahiko's death and that only stressed her out more. In fact, he was a bit surprised because he had the feeling that after venting, Conan had a less cold and more cheerful attitude, almost like in her youth. As if he had let go of a big anchor. Tony didn't need much to convince Conan to go along with his plan and reveal after the fact that she was actually always a spy working for him, it was enough for Tony to promise to send food and clothes to Amigakure in case of crisis. While the flavor change made Conan become loyal to Tony, it was better to have a happy subordinate, more so when what he asks for can be done with a mere gesture with no trouble. It could also be considered as charity from the cuckoo store, as the war orphans would receive some level of support and be grateful to him. Of course, they had to fill in some gaps in his story for when he would face questioning from Jiraiya or Tsunade. How they met long ago, how Conan got separated from his two friends because of a difference in beliefs, etc. Tony was convinced that Tsunade wouldn't pose any problems once she said that 80% of the information she got from Akatsuki was actually passed on by Conan. The only person who could notice the lie would be Taiyuya due to her infernal ears, but Tony just needed to talk to her upon his return and he was confident that his girlfriend wouldn't rat him out. Even if he had to sacrifice his body in exchange for her silence. Several times. Do you think we can fool that pervert? Tony asked Conan. Jiria Sensei may be immature, but he's not stupid, I think he will have serious doubts about our history, answered Conan while combing Fenrir's fur with a paper comb that she folded herself, which apparently relaxed her. Who would expect Conan to be a lover of animals and their fluffiness? Tony only knew how much she loved origami. For example. No doubt he's wondering why I sent you the information and not him, Conan commented, exposing one of the obvious weaknesses. Just say you trust me more than him, it's not like you're lying, Tony dismissed. That's true. Conan reflected. In fact, she felt much more comfortable with Tony than with the sensei she didn't see for years and who never came back for them but, will he believe that you destroyed the Rinnegan and didn't keep it for yourself? I don't need her to believe me, said Tony pulling out a scroll, I have the Hokage's order, you can stick your doubt smeared in oil deep into your dirty. Tony. Interrupted Conan looking at him, language. Right, he forgot that Conan was actually still herself. I'm sorry, but you get my meaning, Tony laughed as he put the scroll away, by the way, do you know where the demonic statue, the Ghetto Mazo, is? Yes, Conan nodded, 
it's in a special subway room protected by several seals that only Nagato or I can open. Take me to the statue, we should still have time before Jiraiya arrives Tony stood up and let Fenrir hide in his shadow. Yuppie and Neferpita returned after eating their payment, so he didn't need to keep an eye on them and have them eliminate Jiraiya by mistake. Follow me Conan separated into paper butterflies and flew quickly in one direction as Tony chased after her. Tony wanted to try something with the statue that was the shell of the ten tails, if he succeeded, it would solve a lot of things. But he needed to hurry, because even though it was only a few hours since Nagato was defeated, Abido and Zetsu could figure out that something was wrong and summon the statue somewhere unknown. They reached a chamber deep in the earth and Conan lifted several layers of ceiling before they could enter its interior. Here it is, Conan pointed with her delicate white hand. It's uglier and bigger than I expected, Tony muttered as he approached him. Time was against him, so he didn't beat around the bush and once he got close enough to the statue, he began to carry out his plan. Gourmet demon awakened gluttony's homunculus. Under Conan's incredulous gaze, Tony assumed his gourmet demon form and using his abilities, somewhat awkwardly swallowed the ghetto mazo into his separate space as a snake would a buffalo. Devil Fruit Awakening the statue seemed to react to the strange energies trying to invade it. One was furiously trying to erode its existence and digest it, while another was trying to turn it into food to speed up the process. The white zetsis on its underside began to act, or at least tried to. Indeed, it's not enough as long as it has the tailed beasts inside it, it will resist, Tony felt he needed to add something else to the mix in order to achieve his goal. Gluttony Breath of N. Food Grimoire activate food magic gluttony's banquet. A large amount of mushrooms began to grow from the ghetto mazo and the resistance that was present because of the white zetsis was heavily depleted. At the same time, the bijus that were enclosed in the statue were sucked out to prevent it from being able to use its chakra to put up a fight. Under the attack of so many strange forces, the statue started and ended up dissolving inside Tony and he felt a great increase in his strength. Not bad, Tony clenched his fists and felt the difference. He then turned his gaze to the masses of chakra that were the bijou waiting to the side Shikaku, Matatabi, Isabu, Sun Goku, Kokuo, Saiken, and Chome. What should I do with you? Ding! The host has obtained a hidden achievement. Ding! The host has completed a hidden achievement. Hidden achievement there is only one place for the supreme predator. Condition devour the tentailed regardless of its state. Carapace, awakened, chakra tree, etc. Due to the nature of the hidden achievement, the rewards are different than usual. Hidden reward 1 Due to Madara's cultivation with Hashirama's cells in the statue in the past, the host obtains full wood release. In addition, he can also pass the ability to another person through fluids as long as he is a descendant of Hashirama's blood. No side effects or faces appearing anywhere on the body. Hidden reward 2 Due to the digestion of the white zetsis and its origin, the modified turkey living dolls technique has been restructured and optimized into turkey spores. The host can now create white zetsu spores and feed them with chakra to speed up the creation of dummies, without the need for the previous steps and ingredients. Hidden reward 3 Because the host has devoured a higher life form, he has reached a new understanding about the origin of life, food immersion and the cycle. Gets the blueprint of the FLDS MDFR version Meatball Rain 2. That's something else. Tony was quite pleased with the surprise rewards here I was complaining about the cut down version of the wooden release and I get the full version. I'll have to make a good deal with Tsunade. Hmm, the spore thing will prove convenient and save me a lot of time. Will I be able to take advantage of her espionage skill or was only Black Zetsu that skilled? I don't remember. Although the FLDS MDFR thing will be a pain in the ass, Tony scratched his chin somewhat exasperated, I mean, the technological level of Naruto's world is very inconsistent. Advanced for some things and almost medieval for others. I'll have to study it carefully and see if I can leave it as an inheritance for my descendants, technology isn't my thing either and it could be worth as some sort of secret clan treasure or something. After all, I'm the only one who can supply the goods for my business because of my devil fruit and this machine can solve that role when I'm not around in the future, as it only needs water to make a good meal just thinking about the amount of technical study and programming I'd need to do, he loses his appetite. Tony turned around to see Conan with his jaw unhinged and a blank stare. Maybe he should have asked him to wait outside. Conan, he called to snap her out of her shock, come on, I'll wait for Jiraiya's arrival with you and keep him at bay. 
I'll treat you to some jasmine tea to relax, we need to think if we left any important loopholes. Yes, Conan took a few seconds to follow Tony. Somewhere on Earth's Earth. Madara, I think Pain might be in trouble. Zetsu Black came out of the ground and looked at Abito, who was lying down looking at the sky, thinking about something with a distracted look. What do you mean? Abito straightened up and looked at Black Zetsu. I received information that Jiraiya is halfway to Amike Cure, most likely to find out the situation there. Originally I wasn't too worried about it, but a few minutes ago I lost contact with the rest of the White Zetsus. He remarked, all of them. What? Abito jumped to his feet and without pausing formed a seal with his left hand. After two minutes of waiting, he frowned Nagato is not responding to the body magic lantern jutsu, it's not normal, he never dares to let me wait so long. Is it possible that he's occupying his concentration in a fight and that's why he can't pay attention to us? Theorized Zetsu Black before shaking his head I shouldn't, Jiraiya still had a run ahead of him. Was there someone else I didn't notice? If so, that person or team should have a full strength level or higher than Jiraiya. Otherwise, Nagato would be relaxed enough to respond, Abito said as he tried to think, is it Iwagakure? No, it's unlikely at this time. What do we do? Asked Zetsu Black uneasily, putting aside the pain puppets, we can't let anything happen to the Rinnegan. Otherwise, the Moon Eye plan will be ruined. Reassure yourself, Conan is with him, Abito reflected, she's Nagato's right-hand woman and she's just as interested as we are that nothing happens to him, she's practically his guardian angel, as ironic as that nickname is for her. She'd certainly sacrifice herself to give him a chance to escape if things go wrong. So the chances of anything happening to Nagato are almost nil as long as he doesn't leave her side, and we know he won't. I'm more worried about the White Zetsu's problem, did it ever happen in the past? Black Zetsu shook his head. The Ghetto Mazo statue can't be summoned if you don't have a genuine Rinnegan, otherwise, I might check what's going on. Abito looked at the clouds in the sky for a moment and returned his gaze to Black Zetsu, I have a bad feeling about it. Since you've lost contact, let's go in person to see what's going on. With our speed, it's only two days of travel. Even if it's just a missed alarm, we can take advantage of the trip to observe the attack on Kanoha. I agree, Zetsu was even more uneasy than Abito thought he was. Rinnegan aside, the White Zetsus were a force he had been cultivating for years and he was very familiar with their use. He really couldn't think of a logical reason to lose contact so suddenly. A barrier? No, there were few barriers that could block their transmission of information. A seal? Even less possible, they would need to trap and seal every white zetsu to accomplish that. The only thing that could explain the loss of contact was if all the white zetsus died at once in all the different places they were, but that wasn't possible because of how far apart they were from each other. For mother's sake, what the hell was going on? Back to Amike Cure. A small blue toad was swimming through the canals and looking around. After finding a hidden area in a corridor of pipes, it stopped and a hand larger than its entire body came out of its mouth. Jiraiya pulled the rest of his body out and turned his attention to his vicinity. Thanks for the ride, he thanked the toad, who vanished in a puff of smoke. Jiraiya lifted his head and with a few discreet movements, he blended into the crowd, it's time to gather information. Where should I start? Em, I think I'll go to my favorite option after I get something to eat to get this cold out of my system. He approached a tea store to drink something hot and while he was trying to get information by posing as an absent-minded traveler, two Amigakure ninja approached him and he secretly raised his guard, preparing for a possible fight. Jiraiya, please come with us. Angel Sama is waiting for you, said one of them as his partner stared at him, clearly recognized as one of the Sanmin of Kanoha. Angel Sama? Jiraiya remembered what the shopkeeper said about the paper silhouette that hung in the store, saying that it brought good luck well, who am I to keep a lady waiting? She said in a joking tone, which no one laughed at to her discomfort. How did they find me so quickly? He thought uncomprehendingly as he followed them, attentive to his surroundings to avoid an ambush. If Tony would hear Jiraiya's question, he would really slap him twice in the face. He was wearing a flashy red outfit, with white hair that marked a stark contrast and a gigantic scroll on his back. You had to be a fool not to recognize him. Jiraiya was secretly surprised that despite following the Amigakure ninja for several minutes, no attack or ambush occurred. It seemed that they were actually leading him to their leader. 
The three arrived at a tall tower in the central area of Amigaycure, which faced west and had several offices inside. This is it, the rain ninja indicated, pointing to the double door that led to the most important room in the tower. Jiraiya nodded and as he approached the door, he raised his alertness again, ready to react the moment he sensed something was amiss. He entered and saw the equivalent of the Hokage's office, but more spacious and tidy with shades of grey and thin pipes on the sides. Two people were looking at him with little interest. You took too long, Jiraiya, he heard from one of them, in a familiar voice. What's going on here? Jiraiya could see what was in front of him, but he couldn't make sense of it. Tony was sitting drinking some kind of tea next to a blue-haired kunoichi who was making origami with one hand and eating a chocolate frog with the other, who he recognized as his former apprentice, Conan. Why is it that whenever Tony is around someone is eating chocolate frogs in his presence? It couldn't be a coincidence. Conan. You've become quite a woman, but I heard you died, Jiraiya commented as he tried to make sense of the scene and took a seat, and what are you doing here, Tony? Stopping you from sending everything to with your selfishness that was what Tony wanted to say, but instead he answered I came to get information from my spy. Conan is your spy. Jiraiya opened his eyes and his gaze went to Conan, who nodded calmly as he finished eating the chocolate frog. It wasn't polite to answer with a mouth full of food. So you're the angel Sama the Amigekure ninja talk about? No, wait, answer me this first what about Yahiko and Nagato? Dead Conan used a single word to sum up the situation after he finished eating and wiped his mouth with a paper napkin. Jiraiya's expression became complicated and sad when he heard that his students died. What happened? He asked wanting to know more of the story, and how did you end up becoming Tony's spy? It all happened with Hanzo's ambush. Conan began to explain the circumstances of Yahiko's death, how she and Nagato suffered from her loss, the change in Nagato's behavior, their estrangement due to the difference in ideals despite seeking the same peace, how she met Tony and they got closer, etc. Conan spoke for half an hour at a leisurely pace. So it's true, Nagato was really pain Jiraiya's expression turned dark as plan would cause countless casualties and the idea of everyone understanding each other through pain is completely misguided, I can understand why you would distance yourselves. Tony resisted the urge to roll his eyes, he didn't believe a word this man said. What was someone like him going to understand? It was like saying that you go along with someone in feeling, how true it is, only the one who says it knows. Of course, later Jiraiya started to raise the doubts that Conan and Tony expected, but he was silenced when Conan said looking him in the eyes. You never came back and I had to depend on Tony, what did you expect? Tony could almost swear he heard the weight of guilt hit Jiraiya with a resounding slap, but he didn't feel bad for him for a single second. Does that feel bad for you? You didn't seem to have a single remorse for what Naruto had to go through during his entire childhood that you were fully aware of, you old idiot. Wait, you explained how Yahiko died but not Nagato Jiraiya realized there was a gap in the explanation of the events. Look at this Tony intervened for the first time between the reunion of student and sensei, extending the mission scroll he got from Tsunade. Jiraiya took it and read the scroll. It was legit, but the contents of the mission seemed too vague, almost as if. Jiraiya looked up and looked at Tony uncertainly. It couldn't be, could it? You guessed it, Tony nodded, I eliminated Nagato and destroyed the Rinnegan, his voice expressed no guilt or remorse, like someone killing a rabbit to cook it. Jiraiya clenched the scroll in his hands and gave him a hard look, but he felt strange to see that Conan didn't seem to have the slightest grudge with the murderer of one of his two best childhood friends. You didn't come here just to get information, did you? said Jiraiya trying to calm down and not make a big fool of himself. Actually yes, it was just that Nagato somehow discovered my undercover meeting with Conan and I was forced to act, Tony lied without even blinking. For some reason, he was happy to see Jiraiya's reaction to his words. Perhaps he detested this man more than he knew himself. No, Tsunade told me you were strong, but Nagato had the Rinnegan and you couldn't have beaten him in such a short time. He also had the pains backing him up, it's too much for you. Tony raised an eyebrow, it seems that as Conan said, Jiraiya was indeed immature but not a complete idiot. He deduced the situation perfectly, as he was in fact right. It wasn't him who eliminated Nagato, but Neferpatu. And it was Yuppie who took care of the pains. You're underestimating me by a very wide margin, Jiraiya, he replied with obvious dissatisfaction in his tone, Conan can vouch if you need validation so badly. 
Jiraiya looked at Conan and she nodded calmly. In fact, he finished the fight with Nagato in less than an hour. Keep in mind that the Rinnegan was seriously draining Nagato, despite having the physique of an Uzumaki, he was practically skin and bones. Once his real body was located, he was quite vulnerable, he explained as he used his paper jutsu to make a miniature version of Nagato's current appearance. Jiraiya examined the figure closely and ended up looking away. The rib bones were visible, the cheeks were sunken in and he had several rods stuck in his back. I could have found another way, he complained childishly. Maybe, said Tony with a shrug, but if someone points a gun at me with intent to eliminate, I eliminate him. Another way was to watch you die, but Tsunade and the others don't deserve to go through that pain just for you. It would have been so easy to let them eliminate you and then intervene. Tony couldn't help but sigh, he was too soft-hearted at times. Like when he thought of Kurinai's unborn baby and got involved in the fight with Akatsuki's zombie duo. And how do I know you don't have the Rinnegan with you? Jiraiya asked sharply. That's the best part, I don't need you to believe me. Jiraiya's expression changed and the murderous intent began to focus on Tony. Wait, did he say the last part out loud? Show me Nagato's body and let me search you, Jiraiya demanded as he stood up, the Rinnegan is too dangerous if it falls into the wrong hands. Tony looked genuinely perplexed at Jiraiya. He had saved him from his death, he had unhesitatingly destroyed the Rinnegan to prevent disasters out of greed and hunger for power, he had even saved Conan in a way so that he could live a happy life. And Jiraiya. Did he dare to doubt him? Abito and Black Zetsu arrived in Amage Cure the next morning and saw the traces of destruction around them. What happened? Black Zetsu asked, for there to be this level of damage, there really had to be a Kage level battle. I'll go find Nagato and Conan, Abito became nervous for some reason. I'll check the Ghetto Mazo, said Zetsu Black before sinking down. Perhaps the ceiling could block others but Zetsu was the one who delivered the sealing technique to Nagato and could take advantage of a back door to enter the sealed room when needed. Abito searched for hours for the whereabouts of Nagato, Conan or any pain, but could find no trace. He had to use Genjutsu on several Amagekure ninja to extract information from them about what had happened in the past few days in the village. Did Jiraiya fight Nagato? Abito was puzzled, but the ninja's memories clearly showed Jiraiya fighting one of the pains using Taijutsu, does he have any speed techniques we don't know about? I reflect. Madara. Zetsu Black emerged from one of the pipes and looked desperately at Abito he's not here. He shouted frantically, the ten-tailed shell is gone. The source of white Zetsus is also gone. There was only one letter in the place. What did you say? On my way to Kanoha. Thanks for helping me with the ceiling, Conan, Tony thanked as he jumped between the branches, I didn't expect you to have specially prepared papers to lock up the bijus, I saved myself a lot of trouble. While they're locked in the jars and sleeping, I'll have time to figure out what to do with them, he patted the large scroll on his back where the sealed containers were stored. Too bad Sensei was unable to calm down, Conan sighed as she levitated next to him in her paper angel form, keeping the same pace, at least he died painlessly, that's more than most ninja can ask for. Yes, Tony really went over the edge with Jiraiya when he questioned him and eliminated him in the heat of the moment. Even with Jiraiya's readiness to make a move, he was unable to react when Tony used his new strength with the Dirouse knives to decapitate him. Once he fell dead, he turned everything on him into mushrooms with the breath of N and threw them into one of the streams of water that ran through Amage Cure, so that it would return to its original burial place. He also prevented them from obtaining his DNA to use Edo Tensei on him. He didn't revive in the series and wasn't going to this time either. Later, he and Conan did a skit by using some clones to make it look like Jiraiya was fighting pain in Amage Cure in the eyes of various viewers. He even mimicked toad oil techniques to make it more believable. His intention was to make everyone believe that Nagato and Jiraiya eliminated each other. That's why he was walking back to Kanoha, to make an excuse for the time he was away, searching for Jiraiya's body in Amage Cure, but unfortunately, he was unsuccessful. What a pity. He wasn't too worried about Mount Mayaboku's reaction, if the old toad tried to use the prophecies against him. He would open a new chain of stores serving sautéed frog legs. He believed the old man knew when to shut his mouth and after all, Jiraiya's death was originally meant to happen naturally. It just changed whose hands did it, which is irrelevant. 
Tony didn't know that in fact that was the case, the Toad Elder saw that Jiraiya's death was imminent, but he didn't wish to see the exact details of how it happened, it made him too sad. It was better to let things happen and not try to intervene. So Tony was actually spared and the old Toad still believed that Jiraiya's death had run its natural and undisturbed course. A misunderstanding that would never be resolved for everyone's benefit. Are you sure it's okay for me to accompany you to Kanoha? Conan asked somewhat nervously, from their point of view, I'm a central Akatsuki and they might not listen to your explanation. Conan was not wearing the characteristic Akatsuki robe, as she was now a spy who was discovered and therefore, she could stop pretending. She was wearing a lavender-colored set of clothes. Don't worry, I have this confidence at the very least or I wouldn't have asked you to come with me Tony assured although what I'm going to have to do next won't be pleasant at all. Right, the current Hokage is another Sanin and I don't think she will take Sensei's death lightly Conan remembered when he met the team of Jiraiya, Tsunade and Orochimaru in the past. Tony kept silent. Leaving aside that Tsunade would turn to drinking for a few days, the impact on Naruto could be more dangerous due to the fact that he had not yet managed to harmonize with Kurama. Pain's attack on Kanoha will no longer happen, but another QB attack could occur if he is not careful. He should remind Tsunade to reinforce the seal on Naruto before giving him the news. And speaking of Naruto, he wondered how the events on the bridge must have unfolded. Itachi was following them, Orochimaru must be dead and a reunion or something should have happened. Things were getting so sidetracked that he really wasn't too clear on what would actually happen. What is still pending? Kabuto should know Edo Tensei and that alone is reason enough to eliminate him. He needed to take care of Abito, for which he would undoubtedly need to talk to Kakashi and Karen. And then there was the biggest latent danger, Black Zetsu. He wasn't worried about him hiding. He had an idea of how to use the interdimensional summoning ticket single use item that had been gathering dust in the system to locate him. But he still needed to figure out how to solve it, since without the Rinnegan he couldn't lock it up like Kagaya was locked up. And he didn't want to use something that might break after a few decades, he wanted to find something more permanent. Let's take a short break and have a drink. Tony needed to clear his head a bit and they still had time. Good, Conan didn't say much, if she had discovered how good the cuckoo store's goods were earlier, she would have become a regular in the business. While Tony was preparing some simple snacks, he was thinking whether the wood release should happen before or after the news of Jiraiya's death. The condition was to use fluids to transfer it, so Tony was thinking about a blood transfusion or something like that. Sure, there were other more adult methods to fulfill that condition, but Tony didn't think about using them since he had Taiyuya's feelings to think about. Not to mention how awkward it would be to meet Tsunade every time afterwards. Maybe mix some tears with strong alcohol. The return trip passed without haste and when they were only half an hour away from reaching the village, Tony used the summoning technique to summon a pair of chocobos and ride them at full speed, giving the impression that he had rushed. Why didn't he return with the reverse summoning? Because he needed time to think about how to break the news of Jiraiya's death, so he accompanied Conan along the way to calm his emotions and readjust his mentality. He had the chocobos slow down as they crossed the gates, and he undid the summoning to jump onto the rooftops and head for Tsunade's office. Seems like Naruto and the others have already returned he thought when in one of the streets he saw Sakura's back she looks discouraged, what happened? He made a mental note to look for information about it later, maybe she was just sad because she didn't convince Sasuke to return or maybe something important happened. Tony and Conan landed at the Hokage's building and entered. Knock. Knock. Go ahead, Tsunade's voice came from inside and they entered the office. Tony-kun. Shizun looked at Tony in surprise because they didn't expect him to come back so fast, accompanied by such a pretty woman but with such a serious expression. Tsunade looked up from the documents she was signing and glanced at Tony for a moment before looking at Conan and frowning. What's going on, Tony? He secretly prepared to fight and Shizun picked up on the strange atmosphere, putting herself on guard as well. The last information she received was that Conan was one of the core members of Akatsuki and was now in front of her, accompanied by someone she trusted. Tsunade naturally recognized Conan as one of the children they saw in Amage Cure, so she was puzzled by the sudden situation. I bring three important pieces of news, Tsunade Tony knew she needed to act serious and even a little effective, so it was time to give it all before I report anything, I must clarify an important point. The information I provided from Akatsuki was not found as I said in the past, 
but the vast majority was sent to me by my spy in the organization I tilted my head to point to Conan, who nodded to confirm that statement. Why wasn't she informed about it? Tsunade assessed his reactions and came to the conclusion that Tony was not into Jinjutsu, so she lowered her guard a bit but didn't dare to relax yet. Tony went on to explain how he met Conan during the years he expanded his business outside the village, how he managed to convince her to be his spy, etc. And the reason I didn't say anything, not even to you, Tsunade, was because I didn't know if there were prying ears nearby and I didn't want to risk her, he finished explaining implying that he was very alert with Zetsu's presence, although due to recent events, she has lost her cover and can't stay there anymore, so I hope she can be admitted to Kanoha. I will provide her with a job myself. Tsunade listened carefully to the whole story and found no loopholes, so she decided to trust Tony for the time being and would later send some ANBU to check some facts if necessary. Okay, so what's the news? He turned his scrutinizing gaze away from Conan and focused on Tony. Remember the planned attack against Kanoha that Akatsuki wanted to carry out? Yes, we made a lot of preparation Tsunade wouldn't forget it, let alone remembering the considerable donation Tony made at the time, which greatly accelerated things and solved the problem left behind by Sarutobi and Danzo. Well I don't think it will happen anymore, Nagato died and the Rinnegan he possessed was destroyed. What? Tsunade stood up in disbelief and seeing Conan's sad expression, confirmed that Tony wasn't joking at all what? Jiria Sensei did it at the cost of his life, Conan said as he looked at the ground. The statement was like a bombshell in Tsunade's mind. What? Did you? Say. The Hokage's voice trembled as she looked at Tony, expecting him to complain about Conan for expressing himself badly. The thing went like this. Tony sighed and told the story he prepared beforehand. How he infiltrated Amage Cure to meet Conan and get more information, how Nagato discovered them by accident at the last minute and they started fighting, he how Jiraiya suddenly intervened in the fight, how Nagato used his Rinnegan to create a kind of seal to block Jiraiya's toad summoning, how they fought all over Amage Cure, how Nagato and Jiraiya eliminated each other without the possibility of Tony or Conan being able to intervene in time because of the pains, the way Tony destroyed the Rinnegan to prevent another user from emerging with a transplant and then how much time he spent searching for Jiraiya's body that fell into the strong water currents of Amage Cure without success. Tsunade slumped into the Hokage's seat and covered her face with both hands. She took several deep breaths and asked Tony to continue. Shizun at his side could barely hold back tears when she heard the whole story. The Moon Eye plan can no longer happen Tony said after a silent pause with Conan's help. I found the demonic statue they used to extract the bijus and seal them. Don't ask me how, but after a great effort I managed to destroy it permanently, eliminating at the same time the supply of white zetsis and recovering the seven bijus. Tsunade abruptly raised her head and opened her eyes wide when she heard that Tony managed to recover all the bijus stolen by Akatsuki and at the same time increased her belief about the story that Conan was her spy. With your permission, Tsunade, I would like to keep them sealed and not make their recovery known until we have taken care of all the remaining problems, at the very least, said Tony and seeing the puzzled expression of the two women, he explained, if I'm not mistaken, when the remnants of Akatsuki investigate what happened in Amage Cure, they will discover Jiraiya's fight with Nagato that resulted in the loss of the Rinnegan. I was very careful and I don't think anyone saw me. They won't think about Conan's defection and maybe they now believe that he died defending Nagato. But when they see that the statue and the bijus disappeared, they will freak out. Then. If they find out that Kanoha recovered all the bijus, they might spread the news to the other villages and manipulate them to exert pressure or even stimulate them to attack a Tsunade caught Tony's line of thought. That's right, if this scenario comes to pass, then the preparations you made for Payne's attack could very well be considered preparations for war. Tsunade couldn't contain herself from cursing, what's the remaining news? Tell me it's something positive, I don't think I can take another piece of bad news right now. Actually, if it's a good thing, Tony nodded, I've thought of a way to take care of Black Zetsu permanently, but for that I need the help of Kakashi, Karen and the village to succeed. What is the way? Tsunade was aware of how problematic Black Zetsu was if the information she got was correct and sealing it would only delay things for a while. When I destroyed the Ghetto Mazo, I left behind a letter with a date and place to lure Abito and Shirley, Black Zetsu. The date is scheduled for a month from now and is set at a specific location beyond the Land of Iron. Are you not worried that they will get information from the letter? 
The origin of the paper, the style of writing and things like that, Tsunade asked. Don't worry, I used a letter they use in Iwagakure and the handwriting is not mine or Conan's, so they won't get anything useful no matter how much they examine it Tony assured that there was nothing that Abito and Black Zetsu could find out. It's good that you've been careful. So, what do you need us to do? Here's the plan. Several minutes later. So that's your goal, Tsunade reflected and nodded, indeed, it's risky, but if it goes well then we could stop worrying about them. You may go. All right. By the way, Tsunade, Shizun Tony turned around before leaving the office and looked at her eyes, which were red if you need to let off some steam, stop by my place later, I'll prepare you something nice to go with the drinks. I guess I'll have to bother you later then. Shizun nodded implying that she would go too. Conan and Tony left the Hokage's building and went to Tony's house, where they were greeted by Taiyuya and Karen. Who is she? Taiyuya felt a little uncomfortable to see a woman as beautiful as Conan arriving with Tony to his house. Is Karen home? Call her and I'll fill you all in once we're all together. By the way, this afternoon you'll have to be patient with Tsunade and Shizun. Tony explained the whole situation while Taiyuya was sitting on his lap and with her arms wrapped around his neck, an unusually clingy position for her when other people are present. Was she somehow feeling threatened by Conan and was declaring her sovereignty? Adorable. Tony couldn't help but wrap his hands around her waist to comfort her. Karen listened and looked at Conan who was sitting on the couch in front of her, shocked at the blue-haired woman's tragic life experience. So Jiraiya died against Nagato, Conan will live with us for a while until things calm down and tonight we need to comfort Tsunade for the death of her teammate Samurai's Taiyuya, who felt calmer after hearing everything and feeling Tony's reassuring grip. That's right nodded Tony as his gaze shifted from Taiyuya to Karen Karen, as I mentioned, you will play a vital role in a month's time, so if possible, you'd better concentrate on practicing what I said during this period of time. Taiyuya and I will help you train. I'll do my best, Karen nodded somewhat excited and nervous, after all, Tony rarely asked her something so important, but, will Kakashi be alright? I've examined him at the hospital and he was quite sad when he found out what happened to his friend. I think anyone would be depressed if they were in his situation, Conan commented, when he heard the background that Madara had, he was forced to eliminate his teammate and was seen by the other, all because of an old man who wants to come back to life and doesn't know that he is also a puppet in someone else's hands. Karen, remember not to mention anything to Kakashi, said Tony totally serious, while I'm sure Kakashi will understand what we will do, it's better that everything is done and sealed before bringing him up to speed. Tsunade and I will take care of that. I got it. Karen became aware of the seriousness of the matter. On another note, do you know how Naruto and the other's mission went? Tony asked as he remembered how he saw Sakura in the village. Not very well from what I heard Karen shook her head and explained what she knew Sasori's spy turned out to be Kabuto, but he broke free from the control seal with the help of Orochimaru and the situation ended in an ambush where Naruto almost lost control. Later, they found a base and Naruto and company saw Sasuke who tried to eliminate them but before they could even speak, Hitachi Uchiha appeared and Sasuke chased him. Didn't they go after them? He asked, what about Orochimaru and Kabuto? Sasuke was a minor character at this point and once Black Zetsu was eliminated, he would lose any value in Tony's eyes even if he had the reincarnated chakra of one of the two sons of the Sage of the Six Paths. About that. Karen scratched her nose apparently the new captain of Naruto's team knocked them both out to keep them from chasing him. Tony raised his eyebrow, he didn't expect Yamato to be so decisive. The captain preferred to search Orochimaru's base, but Naruto and Sakura wouldn't listen to him. They weren't in good shape after the fight on the bridge and getting into another one where two renegades level ninjas were, was too dangerous, Karen clarified, after knocking them out, he inspected the hideout and found Orochimaru dead with a grotesque form torn to pieces. So in reality, Tsunade is the last of the three Sanin left alive. Did the captain retrieve Orochimaru's body? If Yamato took the remains of that grotesque snake form, then Kabuto could not use his strange intravenous method to obtain his second form. And if he doesn't obtain his second form, he might not be qualified to learn the Ryuichi Cave Sage mode. According to Tsunade's NCI, he did, Karen confirmed her suspicions. Tony nodded, that meant that the only threat Kabuto possessed was his knowledge of Orochimaru's modified Edo Tensei. Wait, how did Naruto and Sakura react? 
Tony was actually thinking only about Naruto's reaction, since he saw Sakura's state when she returned to the village with Conan. Sakura was disappointed of herself and did not stop saying that she had not improved enough, so she was determined to train even harder so that history would not repeat itself again. And Naruto? I don't know, Sakura didn't want to talk about it and I haven't seen him since he was knocked unconscious in the Kanoha hospital for treatment. Tony frowned, something wasn't right. He reluctantly left Taiyuya by his side and stood up preparing to leave. I'm sorry, I need to check something urgently. Talk and get to know each other a little while I'm gone, I left some strawberry brownies in the fridge. He left the house and jumped across the rooftops as he made his way back to Tsunade's office. Tony. Tsunade didn't expect him to return and thought she would only see him later when they went to her house what's wrong. I just heard about Orochimaru and Sasuke. How did you? Tsunade was puzzled for a moment before she understood where the leak came from Karen told you, didn't she? She must have told you when she got to the hospital, I didn't tell her to keep it to herself, but clearly the girl is incapable of keeping anything from you. Well, I'm her cool older brother, you know, Tony nodded. And why did you come? Tsunade asked, did you hear from Itachi? No but Tony made a mental note to keep an eye out for it, he had no idea if Itachi succeeded in his purpose I want to know Naruto's condition, I don't think he's happy right now Tony saw that Shizen's face was not well and it wasn't because of the tears she surely shed for Jiraiya when she left the office earlier. Naruto is in asylum Tsunade watched as Tony looked at her, waiting for more details. She took a moment to consider and decided to continue, you know Naruto is the Jinchuriki of the Nine-Tailed One, right? Well, when he woke up and found out what happened in the actions of his team captain, Yamato, he went ballistic. Right now he's in a special sealing room until he calms down. This could turn out worse than I thought, Tony muttered as his expression darkened. What do you mean? Tsunade, Naruto doesn't know yet what happened to. He left the sentence in the air, but everyone knew he was referring to Jiraiya's death. Not yet, the news hasn't left these walls Tsunade suddenly understood what Tony was referring to do you think that when he finds out, it could cause the nine-tailed seal to fail? Yes, for better or worse, you know that Naruto has lousy control over his emotions, hardly different from a small child on the fringes of his will. If he's already become like this just because he was knocked out for his own good, if he finds out about this now, it will only serve to fuel the flames and get the QB out or he'll cool them dry and become completely depressed. Perhaps taking him to some psychologist from the Yamanaka clan should be considered. I think. Tony has a point, Shizen commented. She was also worried about how Naruto would react to the news and if the reaction was in the wrong way, in the worst of situations, it might become necessary for a new Jinchuriki to appear for the Nine-Tailed One. Something wasn't right with Tony since he came back from Amage Cure with that blue-haired woman. Taiyuya noticed that her boyfriend's heartbeat was slightly erratic and from what she learned recently, it matched the rhythm of someone who feels guilty or is trying to hide something. At first her thoughts drifted and she thought it was Conan's fault but when Tony mentioned how Jiraiya died to Karen, he lied, but didn't look at her with unease, showing his confidence that she wouldn't say anything at the time. So she trusted that he would explain to her later what happened for real, in private. Taiyuya didn't care about Jiraiya, she had only heard things about him and most of them weren't good or had to do with accomplishments from years ago, so his death was irrelevant to her. But she knew about his relationship with the current Hokage, who was Karen's teacher and Tony's friend and she started to fit the pieces together in her head, thinking about what reasons her boyfriend might have to eliminate that pervert. She knew Tony didn't like Jiraiya either and never did anything to hide it from her, but depending on the circumstances of his death, it could bring major problems. And I didn't need too much time to come to an obvious conclusion. Surely some sort of dispute over the Rinnegan must have arisen. Perhaps Jiraiya couldn't resist the temptation of power and tried to attack Tony to snatch them away. Pushing those thoughts to the back of his head, he helped Tony during dinner when Tsunade tried to drown her sorrow in alcohol. Shizun also drank considerably more than usual, but all at the behest of Tsunade herself. In fact, there was no one that night who wouldn't touch the booze. Fortunately for everyone, Tony was already expecting something like this and made sure that the drink that night was strong enough for Tsunade, but didn't cause too much of a hangover. Even to this day I am still amazed at the variety of food and drink available to her. The next morning, Tsunade and Shizun returned to the Hokage's office after spending the night at our house, she was still depressed, 
but letting loose throughout the night seemed to help her mourning process a lot, accompanied by her friends. I believe a funeral will be arranged in a few days, but no exact date was said. The fall of a Sanmin can cause temptation and make people from other villages believe that Kanoha is weakened. The matter has to be handled carefully so that it doesn't blow up. Who would have thought, even dead that man is still causing trouble? Karen went with Conan to show him around the village acting as a tour guide, since in the afternoon she was going to train with Tony his strange abilities. This left Tony and I alone, where after activating some counterespionage seals, she whispered the truth in my ear. I wasn't too surprised, it was really along the lines I expected and it was a conflict because of the Rinnegan. Tony even admitted that he didn't expect to succeed in his impulsive attack, Jiraiya was supposed to be one of the most powerful shinobi in the world and should have managed to block, if not dodge his attack thanks to his years of experience and combat instincts. At most, he wanted to give him a good beating or even secretly cripple him as a ninja so he could retire once and for all, but not eliminate him. He had gone to too much trouble, and for what? It's not your fault, that old man was too distrustful and he got what he deserved, Taiyuya consoled. Thank you Tony took his hands and kissed them would you mind taking care of Fenrir for a while? I need to help Karen with her training, talk to Kakashi and later meet Tsunade to prepare the ambush for Abito. How sure are you of succeeding with your plan? Taiyuya asked him. Pretty sure, affirmed Tony while he explained his idea to his girlfriend, here the danger is not Abito's intangibility, but his ability to flee to his dimension when things go wrong for him. The idea is to set up a large spatial ceiling formation activated upon his arrival with the help of several jonins backed up by bodyguards. Once I'm locked in, we just need Karen to use her domain and separate his heart and eye when it's tangible while I distract him. And what does Kakashi have to do with everything? After Abito is treated, we will give the remaining eye to Kakashi. Once he has both eyes with the Sharingan, we'll track down Black Zetsu and trap him in the Kamui dimension forever. There no matter how long he can live, he won't be able to escape from an isolated dimension whose keys are only two eyes. Couldn't he try to escape when Kakashi uses the Kamui in the future? Taiyuya raised a possible blind spot in his plan. As long as he doesn't enter the dimension himself, there's no risk, Tony assured, remembering that the Kamui's dimension was exclusive to Abito's eyes, we'll talk to him once we're done with Black Zetsu and see what options we can take. We could destroy one of the two eyes and leave it as it is currently, while sealing Kamui's technique in its memory. Although the ideal would be to destroy both Sharingan, I don't think Kakashi would agree to it just like that. But I remember you told me that the Sharingan he has now is actually draining his chakra continuously, it would be better to remove it and grow in a lab a new eye with his cells. That Sharingan means too much to Kakashi on an emotional level, I really don't know if he will be willing, no matter how logical it all is Tony shook his head. What if he finds out about your plan to deal with Abito in a month? Couldn't he be resentful for not bringing it? It would be quite personal. That's a good point, Tony nodded as he looked up, I could take him to protect Karen in secret, but I don't know if his emotions would cloud his judgment. As much of a jonin as he is, it was something that scarred him very deeply. In any case, you'd better discuss it with the Hokage first. You're right, Tony smiled, should I go now? No, you still have time before Karen comes back and the Hokage didn't seem in the mood to talk. I have a better idea, Taiyuya told him as she dragged him to his room and closed the door, turning the latch. Karen's training started in the afternoon and for some reason, her older brother seemed to be in a very good mood. Or maybe it was just her imagination. Whatever it was, her practice was very specific. Speed. The speed at which she deployed her room, using shambles, using amputate or mess. There were too many combinations they could use depending on the situation Tony was clear that the space barrier would most likely be somehow attacked by Zetsu, but they just needed enough time to force Abito to be tangible. And the target of the training was naturally Tony. Since he realized that he lacked control for his new level of strength, he took advantage of Karen's training to master his body again. Two hours later. Karen was lying on the ground, breathing heavily. Holding the sphere was too exhausting and if it wasn't for her Uzumaki physique and the food her older brother gave her, she wouldn't have been able to last this long. Take a break and I'll be back in an hour after I talk to Tsunade Tony left him a picnic by his side so he could regain his strength quickly and went to the Hokage building. Tony. Tsunade's spirits were still low, but she seemed to be hanging in there what brings you here this afternoon? 
I wanted to stop by and have a word and see how you're doing, Tony replied, with a slightly worried expression. I've been in wars and loss is not something I know for the first time, Tsunade shook her head as she sighed and rubbed her forehead, I'll be fine, just. Tonight we'll come to your place too, if you don't mind. You're always welcome both of you, you know that Tony couldn't help but feel a little bitter inside, he really didn't want to see them this way. And what did you want to talk about? It's about Kakashi, he. Yes, I was waiting for Karen or Taiyuya to tell you, Tsunade interrupted Tony, making it clear that she knew the reason for his visit, I'll be direct, Kakashi didn't take the news well when he found out at the hospital and has been restless ever since. According to the psychological analysis, he needs to participate in the operation against Abito and can't just wait for the results. It just won't work, so we need to come up with a plan that includes him. Suggestions I don't think he's happy to be part of the team in charge of the barrier Tony is tired of being the one to put the plan on the table, so he's willing to listen to suggestions. No, that won't do, Tsunade nodded, I went to personally check on Kakashi's condition and took the opportunity to talk to him, letting me know something interesting. And that would be. Kakashi can also use Kemui. Tony paused for a second. Yeah, during Pain's invasion which won't happen anymore because of him he used the technique to save himself from a nail going towards his head or something, right? But Tony didn't remember if it was something he awakened at the time or he was already able to use it before, but he kept it as a trump card. It seemed to be the second option. He can use Kemui. But with limits, right? If there was one thing he was sure of, it was that Kakashi couldn't freely use the technique with only one eye, but the exact details he forgot. He had been in this world for years. It was normal for him to start forgetting details. You're right, Tsunade held up the fingers of one hand, three times, that's the limit how many times Kamui can use. After that, his eye is disabled for a long time. You mean his Kamui could nullify Abito's intangibility or counter his attempt to flee, making it unnecessary to set up the spatial barrier? I'm not sure about the former, but I think it's feasible for two Kamui to neutralize each other, Tsunade explained. But that's only theoretical Tony shook his head besides, the amount of attempts is too limited, I don't think Abito, being the original carrier, has limits when it comes to trying to flee. The bait I put with the card is for one use only and if we fail, well, everything will go to. But it's a fact that using Kakashi could keep Abito in place longer. It's okay, we have about a month to plan everything carefully. Just have the sealing teams practice, in case we need them in the end. I'll talk to Kakashi and see how he can integrate into the plan. How long will it take for him to recover and leave the hospital? A week and a half should be enough, I have Sakura visiting him on a daily basis to prioritize and speed up his recovery. Well, now, drink this, said Tony leaving a thermos of drink on the table. I don't feel like drinking anything right now, Tsunade dismissed, waving her hand. No, believe me, you want to drink this, said Tony, emphasizing the word and raising his eyebrow. Tsunade looked at him for five seconds before letting out another sigh and reaching out to take the thermos. I hope it's not coffee or tea, she commented as she unscrewed it and looked at its contents, milk. Tsunade looked at Tony strangely. Was he implying that its size wasn't big enough? First of all, it's not milk, it's honey milk. Second, if you trust me, drink it without leaving any of it at once, not a drop behind. Maybe one of your dreams will come true. Tsunade looked at the thermos, shrugged her shoulders and drank. They say milk is good for hangovers, don't they? The milk had a sweet, velvety taste that whetted her appetite. Before he knew it, he emptied the entire one-liter thermos and slammed the table with it as he wiped his lips with the back of his hand. Nice. Said Tsunade. Give her a moment. Ha. Huh. Tsunade looked blankly at Tony. A few seconds later, she felt a change in her chakra before it returned to normal. Tony. Hey, completely changing the subject for no special reason, Tony ignored Tsunade's gaze and asked, as a child, you must have seen your grandfather's Mokutan techniques, right? Yes. Tsunade didn't know what she was getting at, but answered unconsciously. What would be the seals for a simple technique? Like, let's say, pulling out a bud. Oh, Tsunade blinked and remembered her childhood, clasping her hands together to show it. She had practiced it countless times as a child, believing she would be able to awaken the same ability as her grandfather it would be boar snake hair monkey snake. 
Then I would gather chakra and hit something wooden, like this she tapped the table while sending some chakra symbolically what's with the sudden interest. It's nothing, I'll go talk to Kakashi, Tony walked out of the Hokage's office. Tsunade looked at Shizun. What do you think he's planning? I don't know, Tsunadesima. Tony has always been. A.H. She suddenly shouted. What's wrong with you now? Tsunade was starting to get tired of these mysterious games. Shizun pointed to the table and Tsunade followed the direction with her finger, freezing the next second. In a corner of the table, where she was sure there was nothing before. A tender sprout grew out of the wood. Kanoha Hospital, Room 546. Kakashi had been having trouble sleeping for the past few days since he learned that not only Abito was alive, but that he witnessed him eliminate Rin with his bare hands. Although the information made it clear that he was being manipulated by someone, the weight of guilt and a feeling of phantom blood on his hand couldn't help but return. What should I do, Rin? He asked himself as he looked at the right hand with which he took the life of his teammate. Even while recovering in the hospital, she made sure to pay close attention to the matter and thanks to Sakura's visits along with her summoning dogs, she learned of the plan Tsunade seemed to be preparing to deal with Abito with the help of Tony Akimichi. He almost ran out to the Hokage's office when he heard it, but Sakura was with him at the time and knocked him out, criticizing him for moving abruptly when he was injured and still recovering. At least he convinced Sakura to voice his request to his teacher and he should know something soon. A knocking at the door brought him out of his thoughts and he unconsciously answered. Come in. The door opened and instead of Guy or the previous members of his team as he expected, it turned out that the visitor was Tony. Ha! Huh. Maybe it was because of his injuries, but he felt that Tony had become stronger since they cooperated in rescuing the Kazakage. How are you, Kakashi? I brought you some rainbow fruit, eat it when you're hungry. That's nice of you, thank you, Kakashi answered while swallowing saliva from the tingling aroma the fruit left on his sensitive trained nose. He had to shake his head to focus his thoughts regarding that matter, the Hokage. Yes, in fact it's one of the two reasons I came to see you, Tony interrupted him and pulled out three papers which he threw to different corners of the room, where a high-level isolation seal was formed, a precaution against Zetsu, courtesy of my little sister. You know, she's good at fuinjutsu. Too bad these seals are one-time consumable. So you know. Kakashi asked nervously. Yes, Tsunade explained to me about the Kamui and your fervent desire to participate in the operation, nodded Tony as he took a seat next to the bed and looked at Kakashi. Honestly, I have nothing against you participating, but I want to know what your thoughts are at the moment. My thoughts. At this point and knowing what happened, you must fully understand that Abito's mental state has crossed a point of no return, so, would you be willing to end his suffering or would it be enough to confront him? I can understand if you don't want to end up with his blood on your hands, so I need to know where you stand with yourself to think what role I can give you in the operation. Kakashi clenched his fists when he heard what Tony said, but not because he was angry, but because he hadn't really finished processing the new situation. What words would he say to Abito when he saw him face to face? Would he freeze at the critical moment? Frankly, I don't know myself, he answered honestly as he lowered his head. Yes, it's not a simple situation, Tony scratched his head, okay, let me put it another way. I'm going to give you different scenarios and you have to answer yes or no in less than three seconds, okay? Take a moment to organize the thoughts if you want and tell me when you are ready. Kakashi nodded and closed his eyes while breathing softly, trying to calm down and focus. Go ahead. Are you sure you want to participate in this operation? Yes. Would it be enough for you to watch from afar? No. If during the confrontation, you are assigned to protect someone from Abito instead of actively attacking, do you have the confidence to succeed? Yes. Even if Abito won't stop yelling and accusing you for Rin's death? Yes, Kakashi took a second longer to answer. He knew he would need to psych himself up before confronting him and one of the tactics he would definitely use would be provocation. Would you be willing to use Abito's remaining eye? What? Kakashi didn't know all the details of the plan, so he froze when he heard that. Tony sighed as he told him his plan, understanding where Kakashi's point was roughly. He needed to confront Abito, but he couldn't be the one to eliminate him or else he would leave a scar on his mind and heart. He had a rough idea of what to do with him. Seal Black Zetsu in the Kamui's dimension. 
Kakashi unconsciously brought his hand to his left eye, I'll do it. You are aware of what would come next, aren't you? I am, Kakashi nodded without lowering his hand, one Sharingan alone is already a big burden on my body, so I don't expect to keep both after finishing with Zetsu. Both? Tony raised his eyebrow, didn't I mention the memory seal? As long as there's a chance for Black Zetsu to escape the dimension, it's too dangerous to keep them, Kakashi shook his head resolutely, this I was given to me in exchange for a promise I was unable to keep, and it seems fair to use it as payment for finishing the matter once and for all. Really? Yes Kakashi expressed as if a weight had been lifted from his heart maybe when it's all over, I can relax a bit, and who knows, find someone to perpetuate the Hataki clan. Dude, that's a flag. A one what? Tony left the hospital after agreeing to Kakashi's participation in the ambush operation against Abito, but the details would be communicated to him later. Now he needed to focus entirely on recovering and getting to his best condition. Well, that was the last of it. Should he give Karen more time to rest? He considered for a moment, it didn't take as long as he thought it would and it wasn't even past the hour he initially promised her I think I'll stop by Ichiraku for a bite to eat, it's been a while since I've been there and I want to see how they're doing. Since Tony started supplying the ingredients for the ramen business, his clientele doubled and Tucci was forced to hire two additional people, who were his daughter Ayam's friends. The shop was also expanded, but not too much, as Tucci wanted to continue making the noodles by hand and expanding the business too much without having properly trained staff would go against his beliefs. Welcome. He heard as he took his seat, what do you feel like? Tony. Hi, I am, how are you doing these days? Tony chatted quietly. Great. My father is very motivated and keeps researching ways to make ramen even better. He mentions you often. I am replied as she covered half of her lower face with the menu, hiding a slight blush. That comment reminded her of her father's reaction when he learned that Tony found a mate, regretting that his daughter couldn't find opportunity for such an outstanding husband. I asked for you, not for your father. Tony shook his head, during his last visits, I am seen to have her mind elsewhere anyway, bring me a bowl of the usual. Right away. She confirmed as she prepared to serve the order. Tony and his little sister were among her regular customers and knew by heart what ramen they ordered each time. While waiting for the food, Tony remembered that he still hadn't heard from Itachi. According to Tsunade, he showed up when Sasuke and Team 7 crossed paths, but he walked away as Sasuke chased after him. It had been several days since then and she still didn't know if she managed to talk to Sasuke or if he was even alive. He doubted that without finishing the matter between brothers, he will act against Abito as he asked him to which actually suited him for his new plan. She should have asked him for a messenger crow or something. Wait, how would he or Sasuke take it if they found out about his plan based on his clan's Sharingan? Although it would be destroyed later, perhaps it would ruin Itachi's efforts to change Sasuke's view of the village higher-ups. Perhaps it would be necessary to ask Itachi to participate to prove that they had no ill intentions. Tony couldn't stand these things, politics gave him a headache. The silver lining of it all, was that he had an idea from way back so that even if he was forced to eliminate Itachi and Sasuke due to circumstances, the Uchiha clan would not become extinct. He just needed to get the bodies within 48 hours of their death and a couple of syringes. Frankly, it's amazing that those obsessed with the Sharingan and Uchiha blood wouldn't think about it despite using such a scientific and medical approach all the time. Although maybe they were only interested in thoroughbred specimens. Artificial Fertilization just get the fresh bodies of some Uchiha men and women and you could have enough materials to make thousands of genuine Uchihas, who could later have their own offspring without intervention. From what he saw in the series, you wouldn't even need to find surrogate mothers, they could grow the fetuses in those futuristic tubes in the labs until nine months of maturation. Just dedicate a few years to them and you have a whole generation of Uchiha at your command. I think I just found Kumogakure's advanced way of obtaining talents, he thought to himself, frightened by his own ingenuity. Kimogakure had a lot of interest in stealing bloodlines, but they always focused on the living. Another example would be the Hyuga. They take measures to destroy the brain and disable the eyes, but they seem to forget that you don't even need to get whole bodies to get the Byakugan. You just need the lower part of some branch members of both genders and you can replicate the same plan. The only flaw one might find at first glance is that they wouldn't have the secret techniques of the clans, but that's not even a problem, 
they sure can get several of them on the black market, since because they can't be used without the characteristics of their own clans, they are not as protected as they should be. Everyone knows the fame of the soft fist and its principle of hitting the Tinketsis. Are the Hyuga worried that someone will copy their technique? No, because it is necessary to have the Byakugan to execute it. And the same goes for the more famous clans. They are not worried about their less important techniques becoming known or making them famous, but no one can replicate them without the effects of their lineage. It has a deterrent effect. As for secret techniques, new ones of their own can always be developed. The days went by and Tony was quite strict with Karen's training, who enjoyed being able to have some alone time with her older brother like in the old days. Conan integrated without too much hassle into the cuckoo store under a new identity and image and got a quiet job, which he was good at, wasn't related to the war and was well paid. He even found a house near Tony's to move into. What, Tony wasn't going to make her work for him for free, just because she was loyal to him didn't mean she wouldn't need to eat, clothe herself or anything else human. He would let her have the life she wanted and live it without interfering. There was a saying that a happy employee is a productive employee. After two weeks, Tsunade managed to pull herself out of her pit of sadness and decided that Jiraiya's funeral would only take place once Black Zetsu was caught. By then, the biggest threat would be out and they could spread the news that he died a hero. Tony didn't comment on the matter, instead, he asked her to keep an eye out for any information involving Kabuto. While the captain of Team 7 took away the remains in Orochimaru's lair, preventing him from obtaining his second form, they still needed to deal with the troublesome Edo Tensei. Now, things don't always go as one expects. Tony was currently in training ground number 13, seeing two figures during the night that he did not expect to meet either at this time, or at the same time. Itachi and Sasuke Uchiha. Did he manage to convince Sasuke not to take revenge on the village and its inhabitants? While Itachi maintained a serene appearance, Sasuke kept his gaze in the distance gazing at the moon, somewhat uneasy about the encounter with Tony. For some reason, despite all his training over the years outside the village, he felt the other party could be a threat. Can I have an update? Tony couldn't stand the staring contest any longer and broke the silence after five minutes of stillness, while I'm glad to see you both, I'm a bit disoriented with the current situation. Although he was glad that they seemed to have made peace, wasn't this too strange? Or was it because of their sibling relationship? If so, I could understand it a little. No, not at all. This was weird. Nizan explained everything to me, Sasuke said with a bad mood in his voice. Nizan. Tony watched as Itachi traced a faint smile and it was clear that whatever happened between them at least mended their brotherly relationship. Shut up. Sasuke looked at him and protested his mockery, evidently somewhat embarrassed. Sasuke. Itachi reminded him that he had to behave himself, these years with Orochimaru had inflated his younger brother's ego. It was clear to Itachi that Danzo's downfall and those responsible for the Uchiha extermination ended as they did because of Tony's actions, it was information he gathered firsthand himself during the time he researched to see if Tony's dishes really could cure his condition. Never mind Tony shook his hand, indicating that he didn't take Sasuke's attitude seriously so. I'm not going to take revenge on the village, if that's what you're asking, said Sasuke looking away as he clicked his tongue. Great, that saves me a lot of work and I'm sure Naruto and Sakura will be happy to see you back, nodded Tony, happy to not have to go out of his way to eliminate Sasuke in his current state, Tsunade has even kept the Uchiha compound intact so you two can move in at any time. Now, Itachi, about what we talked about. I succeeded, he said without changing his expression. Oh, great, you were. What? Tony finished processing Itachi's words in his mind and understood their meaning really. Yeah, it was much easier with Sasuke's help, Itachi assured, wanting to show off his little brother's accomplishment. Wait, so the reason I didn't hear from the two of them for so long was because? We eliminated Abito, Sasuke confirmed, flashing a smirk. It wasn't easy at all, but they were able to eliminate that crazy traitor. What about his Sharingan? Tony needed to ask and just hoped they wouldn't react badly to his question. As he expected, they both frowned at the mention of the eye. My question is whether you have it or did you destroy it, Tony clarified, which didn't really change the situation much. What we do with it only concerns us, said Sasuke with a bad attitude. Is there anything we don't know? Itachi asked with a much more objective attitude. 
Tony had no choice but to tell them about his plan to seal Zetsu Black. Indeed, if Zetsu is as you say, sealing him in another dimension with no possibility of return would be the most ideal, nodded Itachi realizing that there was no greed involved in the previous question, but I remember that Kakashi should have Abito's other Sharingan, can't he use the Kamui? Sasuke's ear twitched, in fact he almost forgot that there was still a Sharingan outside the clan, in possession of his former sensei. I forgot Kakashi, Tony patted his face and the two Uchihas looked at him without understanding what the problem was, I wanted him to participate in the mission in order to solve the story they had between them, but now I don't know how he would react. Wait, you still didn't tell me if you have it or it has been destroyed. A red feathered crow separated from Itachi and revealed a Sharingan in his eye. We have it, Itachi showed and after giving Sasuke a brief glance, he added, we know Kakashi and I know he will take the matter seriously, it's not a problem to lend him the eye. But, you'll probably have a hard time tracking down Black Zetsu. We weren't exactly discreet in our confrontation and who knows where he hid. Never mind, as long as he's on the planet, I'll be able to find him, Tony assured, remembering his plan to track him. Leaving aside the Sharingan loan, did you by any chance seal Abito's body? In fact, why? Said Sasuke as he pulled out a scroll from his sleeve. Despite everything he did, I think the only way to give Kakashi some peace is to allow him to bury his old teammate. And I don't think you guys would agree to bury him in your clan's graveyard, would you? They both shook their heads, after what happened, Abito simply lost that right. Itachi knew it was the same, but he couldn't tell if Sasuke would listen to him when the time came. As the three lapsed into another moment of silence, Tony suddenly remembered the hellishly difficult training he put Karen through. My little sister is going to eliminate me, he thought, crying comically inside. Waking Tsunade at midnight didn't do much wonders for her mood, but seeing the last two Uchiha survivors, she understood that something important happened and they moved to the Hokage building. After some explanations and clarifications. Things are getting more and more twisted, said Tsunade as she rubbed her forehead. First came the village's extensive preparations for Payne's massive attack that never happened and now the sealing team that had been training overtime for days had missed their target. All that was real. Well, at least Tony didn't ask for the funds he donated to be returned. Look on the bright side, Naruto will calm down when he sees Sasuke, Tony wanted to cheer her up. What has that idiot been doing? Asked Sasuke. He threw a tantrum some Tony not wanting to point out that Tsunade locked him up until he calmed down in a special sealing room but I think you should see Sakura first. That's right. Tsunade supported the idea, her disciple will be in for a treat. Itachi looked at Sasuke, with a look of admiration and meaning obviated. It seems that in my absence, you did not forget to plan to repopulate the clan. He said with a proud tone. That's not it. Sasuke looked at everyone present with a dark face. By the way, should we wait until the morning to tell Kakashi? Said in a more serious tone Tony. I'll explain it to him myself Tsunade raised her hand, making it clear that it was not a matter to discuss and was determined I have more experience than you with these things, so I should be able to reduce the impact of the news. That's fine. Who was going to refuse the Hokage's order? As Tony said, the Uchiha compound has not been touched, so you can sleep there tonight, said Tsunade turning her gaze to the Uchiha. Tomorrow I will look for all the documentation and ask you to sign some papers to return the property, techniques, and so on that the village improperly confiscated. Won't there be any opposition to getting these things back? We were renegade ninja. Itachi, you went to bring information from Akatsuki as a mole and Sasuke. Eliminated the renegade ninja Orochimaru, both acting in a secret mission that only the Hokage knows about, Tsunade said at once, fixed, anything else. The three present exchanged glances. That should settle it, shouldn't it? Then all that's left is to take care of Black Zetsu and Kabuto, Tony concluded. Kabuto? He's smart, but he's no threat without Orochimaru backing him up, Sasuke frowned. I can't believe that of all people, you would say that, Tony replied with his mouth hanging open, never mind, let's focus on the immortal creature and then move on to Kabuto. You said you can locate him whenever and wherever he is? Tsunade wanted to confirm. Yes, remember the mission I asked the village for a while ago? Tony looked at her with a meaningful expression I'll have some help. Oh, that explains everything, Tsunade nodded, remembering her experience at the Colosseum. She was still digesting the benefits they got from there. 
Before I forget, Tony turned to Itachi and Sasuke, just in case, if you come to visit my house, come in through the door. I have a little one that might accidentally bite you otherwise. A dog? It won't be that big of a deal, Sasuke dismissed. Itachi saw Tsunade start to sweat when Tony mentioned the little guy, so he made a mental note not to push his luck. Besides, his upbringing would preclude sneaking into a friend's house like this. Anyway, when should we go for Black Zetsu? Tsunade resumed the main topic, the eye transplant will take little time with my medical skill, but Kakashi will need some getting used to and we have to see if his body can withstand the consumption of two Sharingans. Tony, can you prepare some meals for him while he has both eyes? No problem, just remember to start cultivating another additional eye while keeping his original eye Tony raised his hand with the OK sign as for the time, we wait three days to see how everything develops and we'll see. Is that all? Asked Tsunade as she stood up and yawned good, I feel like going back to bed. See you tomorrow. They all left the Hokage building and went their respective ways. As she walked through the streets under the light of the street lamps, a familiar sound echoed in her head. Ding! A new mission has been issued. System. I already thought it was strange that you didn't give me any mission to deal with Abito. That was a decision made by the host and the system won't issue a mission just because of that. Really? I mean, seeing how Kakuzu and Haydn's mission went, I almost expected you to want to avenge the loss of culinary specialties exclusive to the Uchiha Kao. The system didn't consider that. Well, it's too late anyway Tony shrugged as he kept walking let's see what new mission there is. Showing the mission info. Will we reach 2 million before the end of the fanfic? Let's see what new mission there is, said Tony. Mission distractions must go away. Task Abito's sudden death has made Black Zetsu feel that his meticulous plans for years are going down the drain and he has gone into hiding to reassure himself, considering whether he should try to hold on to the last shred of hope for his plan or let time pass to start a new one from scratch when another Rinnegan reappears in the world. The host will not be able to concentrate on creating new dishes as long as this individual roams freely, which is unacceptable to the system. Encourage Black Zetsu to never bother you again uncompleted. Reward method to practice and view. Chocolate coins won. Enbu. That's a good thing, nodded Tony, remembering how interesting this training is, with this, the gourmet cells and the FLDS MDFR, now have the basis to found a rich and powerful clan not inferior to Senju or Uchiha. But what can I call the clan? I mean, I was adopted by the Akimichi clan and carry their surname. Taiyuya has Uzumaki blood, but he also has the gourmet cells. He couldn't say that he was taking back the Uzumaki clan and believing that he is a branch of the Akimichi clan wasn't correct either, even though they both have strengths intrinsically related to food. There's no use thinking about it now Tony shook his head, realizing he's being too hasty just the machine, it will take time to build it. Let's leave this for the future me. He read the description carefully. Em, mm, I guess Black Zetsu's last sliver of hope must be a resurrected Madara or he'll try to manipulate Kabuto. I'm more inclined to believe the first possibility, as Kabuto is too smart to be easily manipulated, even if it's someone with so much experience behind him. Tony knew that Kabuto wouldn't pursue something as cheap as revenge against Kanoha if he didn't benefit from it after Orochimaru's death, as he took control of all the facilities, research and subjects he had. The problem was that once Madara was resurrected with the Edo Tensei, his strength would not only prevent him from being controlled or limited like other resurrected, but he would have an infinite amount of chakra and an immortal body. The Rinnegan that would return him to the world of the living no longer existed, so he could not be eliminated, only sealed or released from the technique by the caster's will. I guess I'm forgetting about the real Madara. Tony shook his head and put the matter to the back of his mind as he walked into his house and lay down on his bed, where he found Taiyuya sleeping peacefully. He lay down hugging her and closed his eyes. The next morning, the village was in an uproar as they learned of the return of the two Uchiha after their top secret mission after so many years. Sasuke and Sakura's reunion made Tsunade laugh so hard that she fell backwards from the Hokage chair, while Naruto was crying with happiness on the side with a footmark on his face for getting his friend and rival back. Tsunade took advantage of that overflowing happiness and told them privately about Jiraiya's death. While it resulted in a huge shock for Naruto, the combinations of negative emotions that arose and the positive ones from the recent event found some balance and prevented it from getting out of control this time, to the relief of everyone who was secretly worried. 
Kakashi underwent the eye transplant operation and two hours later, he was already adapted thanks to Tony's specially prepared food, which accelerated the progress and made it possible for him to supply enough chakra to both eyes. As Tony speculated, the burden of having both eyes was not small and if it wasn't for his food, Kakashi wouldn't have been able to withstand the wear and tear they put on his body for a long time. Give me one day to familiarize myself with my new state and it will be enough Kakashi stated with full confidence in the hospital room. Unlike in the past, where he had to learn on his own how to use the Sharingan from his knowledge of the books and what little he knew from Abito when they were little, now he had Itachi by his side to help him. Make sure to take Tony's medicines and food at the prescribed time, Tsunade reminded him after inspecting Kakashi and finding no signs of refusal. Only the consumption was too much, but something temporary that wouldn't leave after effects after being operated again later after resting for another two hours, you can start training under Itachi's guidance. Although we should give you more time to acclimatize, I'm afraid we don't consider that the news of your return could reach the ears of Black Zetsu. So tomorrow you will have to leave with Tony and company to deal with that fellow. Understood. Kakashi affirmed, but then hesitated for a moment before speaking, are you sure it's okay to bury Abito in the village cemetery? When he learned that his expected meeting with Abito was intercepted by fate, he was numb until it was also revealed that they retrieved his body, all in consideration of his feelings. Okay, maybe they didn't do it for that, but Tsunade knew how to choose her words. As she mentioned earlier, she was experienced in these things. Don't worry, although as you understand, we won't be able to write his real name on the stone or use the Uchiha symbol, Tsunade shook her head, confirmed by the DNA that the body was of the real Abito. It's more than enough that he can be buried next to Rin, it wasn't what Kakashi expected, but for him, it was enough to close this stage of his life once and for all. Good Tsunade nodded and left the Kanoha hospital while being followed by Shizun and Tony. They found a bar and asked for a private room, which the owner provided delighted that the Hokage chose his humble establishment. After pouring a few glasses, bottles of water and snacks, they returned to conversation. Do your thing, Tony, Tsunade told him as she handed him the water bottles to transform into good drinks, saving some of her money to gamble with later, so, which ninja do you plan to take with you tomorrow? I'd like to bring, besides Kakashi and me, Itachi, Guy and me. Tsunade finished instead it's not possible, with the Colosseum, the conditions were in our favor, but I can't be absent from the village easily. We don't know how far that rat will be hiding. Besides, don't you want to take Taiyuya or Karen with you? The infernal hearing that Taiyuya now has could be very useful to help you locate him and the skills that Karen awakened would be of great help to prevent him from running away. As much as I would like to, I can't do it, Tony denied with a deflated expression, this morning Taiyuya woke up and threw up in the bathroom. I think he got sick or maybe his gourmet cells are going through another round of adaptation. In any case, I'd rather leave Karen to take care of her while I'm gone. The cup Tsunade was holding suddenly cracked and Tony looked at her in surprise. Is something wrong? Tony asked as he looked at his own glass. Are the glasses defective? Shizun seemed to notice something and looked at Tsunade with wide eyes. It's nothing, I just held back a sneeze, explained Tsunade as she replaced her glass with a calm expression, but if one examined her gaze closely, one would see that she was very surprised, do you feel sick? No, with my constitution it would be very rare for me to be sick and I am sure that if I was, you would have seen it all this time Tony looked at the two kunoichi and felt that she was missing something, but she could not pinpoint what it was. And why do you love these people? Asked Shizen suddenly. Well, Kakashi and Guy have good teamwork and their strength is no slouch, while Itachi I think there's no need to elaborate on why. Still, I'd appreciate it if you'll control Team 7 when we leave tomorrow. And why is that? Tsunade raised her eyebrow. Are you really asking me? Tony was not far behind and also raised his eyebrow, making it clear that everyone present knew why he said it. All right, I'll make sure they don't fool around and I'll try to mislead them to stay busy in the village Tsunade side and while taking another drink, she added and don't worry, I'll take care of Taiyuya if my disciple doesn't know what to do. Put 100% of your attention on the mission and return safely. Thank you Tony smiled and clinked the glasses with both of them. After obtaining Tsunade's consent for the formation of the team and being appointed mission leader, everyone gathered at the village gate the next morning. Are you all ready? Asked Tony to those present while looking around there was no problem. No, Itachi denied. All good on my side, assured Kakashi, 
who was wearing sunglasses to hide both eyes. They fit him well. He couldn't cover himself with the bandana and go blind, could he? My youth is on fire, when do we leave? Guy asked. Perfect, gather around for a moment, said Tony. The team formed a small circle and listened to Tony's quiet words. All clear. Seeing everyone nod, they left the village and started jumping through the branches of the trees to the south. Fifteen minutes later. As they crossed a small section near a river, Tony made a discreet signal and Guy pretended not to notice that a smoke bomb fell out of his tool bag and exploded, causing the whole area to fill with thick smoke. By the time the smoke cleared, Tony's team had vanished without a trace. Three figures emerged from the leaves a few seconds later. Where did they go? Naruto asked as he looked around. The smoke was too extensive, said Sasuke as his Sharingan looked around, trying to search for clues. Should we really be here? Asked Sakura somewhat uneasily, Tsunada Zensei gave us a mission. We're not going to catch that stupid cat again. Complained Naruto, who had nightmares of when they started having those kinds of missions. Meanwhile, back in Konoha. The clones have dispersed, we can leave now, said Tony as they left the Akimichi clan's barbecue place. I didn't expect those brats couldn't sit still, Kakashi denied, how did they find out? Sasuke and Sakura must have connected pieces somehow, Itachi commented. How are we going to find the target? Guy asked, rubbing his belly with satisfaction after eating a good portion of meat courtesy of Tony. Give me a moment, Tony told them as he closed his eyes. System, use the summoning ticket I have to summon. The summoning has been successful and the summoned creature is approaching the host. Reminder the creature has a time limit in this world. The ninjas watched as a white owl approached Tony and landed on his shoulder, pecking his ear in greeting. Meet Hedwig, he said as he pulled out a sausage and gave it to the owl. A summoned beast. Kakashi asked, how many summoning contracts do you actually have? Although it's a summoned beast, it's not in the sense you might be thinking. And how will it help us? Tony pulled out an envelope and everyone could see that it was addressed to Black Zetsu. The peculiarity of this owl lies in a special talent it has as a messenger, no matter where, it is always able to locate the person to whom the letter is addressed. Shall we follow it then? Itachi asked to confirm. Exactly. Also, I should point out that we can't use it for more than a few hours, so we'll have to go full speed once I release it. That's why we ate so well, right? Kakashi realized. Yeah, so let's hurry up. Ready? Tony handed the letter to Hedwig and after a couple of laps on top of them, she shot off in a specific direction. Let's go. Let's show the power of our youth, Guy shouted to them. The four jumped up and hurried after the white owl. Three hours later, due to the intense and constant energy level employed, Tony had to share some energy bars he had prepared in advance as they continued to run. The chase lasted seven hours, with only a brief break when Hedwig stopped to drink water from a lake and catch some mouse to replenish her strength. At the end, they heard the owl's cry in the sky as it began to circle, clearly trying to locate its target in the area. All alert, the target is close, whispered Tony as he followed Hedwig with his eyes, activate the hidden communicators and get ready to act. Remember the information and the plan. In the meantime, in a cave in the area. Is that an owl? Black Zetsu interrupted his discussion with the White Zetsu. What's strange about it? It's probably hunting in the area, it's not the first time we've seen one. No, it's circling in the sky, that's not normal. These birds remain at rest until they hear the sound of possible prey. Look, it looks like it's holding a letter in its feet. Maybe it's a trained messenger bird. Who uses owls and letters these days? Discarded Black Zetsu everyone uses messenger eagles and scrolls. Hey, hey, I think it's getting closer to us. Could it be that the letter is for us? Don't be silly, who the hell would write to us like this? You're right, it's not like we have many friends to speak of. Shut your mouth. He's here. They watched as the owl approached, looked at them closely as if to make sure it was the correct recipient, and dropped the letter, which landed right in front of them. Then it turned and flew away. See? I told you it was for us. Shut up! shouted Black Zetsu at the white man, staring at the letter from afar in confusion. Who could know about him? Maybe it was a letter from that underling of Orochimaru's, Kabuto. 
And how the hell did that owl manage to find him? Wait, someone is coming. Keep quiet and let's hide for now, said Zetsu Black. But the letter. Black Zetsu took control to close the white Zetsu's mouth and dive to the ground, trying to hide his presence. Everything was too suspicious and coincidental, it was better to be cautious. Guy and Tony appeared seconds later, looking at the letter. Was it a decoy? Guy asked, seeing that the recipient of the letter had not been found. It seems that the information we received this time is false, the owl is not the means used by Akatsuki to communicate Tony denied, while behaving as if he felt disappointed the cave seems to be clean, there is no smell of any animal, let's rest a little and go back. Okay, Guy nodded, sitting down on the ground and taking out the water canteen. Did you hear the latest news? Asked Tony after drinking from his own canteen. What news? San Ninjiraya attacked Amagekure and fought the leader of Akatsuki. Yes, I heard it from the higher-ups. What you may not know, is that he apparently stole something from them. Some sort of gigantic statue that is said to have belonged to the Sage of the Six Paths, Tony boasted of having unique intelligence. Zetsu was listening with little interest, but now the two Kanoha ninjas certainly had his full attention. Do you think it's true? Guy expressed with serious doubts, Something that big is not easy to take with you and the Sage of the Six Paths has always been a legend. Maybe it's just a statue from some ancient civilization. I'm not clear on the details either, an acquaintance only mentioned some few Injutsu of the Uzumaki clan, Tony shook his head. Black Zetsu's mind began to work at full speed. If it had been any other type of few Injutsu, he would scoff if he was told it would have the slightest effect on the Ghetto Mazo, but if it was some inheritance from the Uzumaki clan he could no longer be so sure. It's no use knowing that, Guy commented, the superiors must have taken that thing to some secret location to study it and it's not good for us to talk about this outside the village. We're alone, what's the problem? Tony dismissed, besides, I actually know where it is. Really? Wow. Even Zetsu was surprised. Maybe his bad luck was reversed at the last moment. I know where they'll leave that thing temporarily for a month, before moving it to another confidential location. Look, I have the map here, Tony pulled a scroll out of his vest and waved it in his hand. Put that away. Guy jumped up and waved his hands nervously, even if you know, you shouldn't tell me. The less people know, the better. Do you want to get me in trouble? Why do you think I'm telling you? It's already been decided that you'll be one of the ones to help move that thing, your taijutsu will be of great help. Really? Do you need me to lie to you about something like this? This. Okay, show me then, Guy agreed. Zetsu was about to strike out to steal the scroll in Tony's hands, but when he heard that they were going to open the scroll, he thought twice. Perhaps he could spy on the contents without being seen, this way, the disappearance of these two ninja would not alert his superiors believing that the information had been leaked. Thinking about it and making sure by his senses that the two were not paying attention and were concentrating on the scroll, Zetsu quietly poked his head up to reveal his nose and no more. I can't see the critical information, he thought as he only looked at the top of what was evidently a map. The middle and bottom were blocked by the shoulders and backs of the two ninjas. Guy suddenly turned his head. What happened? Tony looked suspiciously behind him as he hastily put the parchment away. I think I saw a pair of eyes, Guy commented as he scratched his head, not quite sure of his own statement, maybe it was a rat, I'm not sure. Well, it could be that there was some vermin and we scared it off with our arrival, causing it to hide at the bottom of the cave. I guess. After examining in that direction for a while and seeing that there was nothing, Guy shook his head I think I'm being a bit paranoid, but we'd better stop talking about sensitive subjects today. After we rest and regain our strength, let's go back to the village and tell me all about it there. Fine by me, just. Blargsa. Tony nodded and suddenly, a tree root shot out of the ground and pierced his abdomen, causing a huge bleeding wound that shattered all his internal organs. Due to the narrowness of the cave, he was unable to dodge and the light in his eyes died soon after. Tony. Guy looked at the tree root in surprise and confusion, Mokutan. That's not possible. Unfortunately, he didn't have much time to think when several more roots sprouted from the ground and blocked the entrance to the cave. Snapping out of his stupor, the first thing Guy did was not to run, but to rush towards Tony's corpse to retrieve the scroll with vital information for the village. No, I can't let you take that, 
Zetsu laughed as several roots held Guy's limbs, you're stronger than you look, he commented somewhat surprised, seeing the strength with which he resisted. Akatsuki. Guy saw Zetsu's characteristic robe and I couldn't help but blurt out, so the information wasn't false. You really use owls to communicate. Of course, why not Black Zetsu didn't care what Guy said, he just impaled him like the other ninja with a little more effort idiots, never talk about confidential information. I don't know how you should have graduated from the ninja academy. He remembered a bit of information about these two. One was a jonin who could only use taijutsu and the other was more of a cook, but he was the one who took Naruto after fighting Sasuke. Hey, after retrieving the scroll, take the letter too, White Zetsu reminded him, it looks like it was really for us according to their conversation, yes. Zetsu Black was also interested and at a glance I could be sure that the letter was ordinary in any sense, without posing a threat to him. It only had a small seal to ensure that the person opening it had chakra, otherwise the contents would be destroyed. After approaching Tony's corpse and taking the scroll, he turned and picked up the letter on the ground. He didn't even bother to remove the roots, leaving the two bodies suspended in the air. He opened the scroll and saw the location. A secret base in the land of T, I see, after confirming the information, he put the map away. Once he was done with everything here, he would hurry over there. Whose letter is it? Ask the white Zetsu, does it have a return address? Don't be stupid, who would give away something like that? Denied the black Zetsu as he poured a small amount of chakra into the seal to dissolve it. Once the seal was gone, he took the paper out of the envelope and unfolded it. Ha! Huh. I can't believe it was so simple, Kakashi sighed when he saw the Zetsu standing still, fifteen plans with variants studied and the first one was the good one. Well, sometimes having too much information can be counterproductive, said Guy. Only instead of his youthful and motivated attitude, he had a cold and serious expression. With two men Gekyo Sharingan swirling in his eye sockets. Well, Guy's not much of an actor, so you had to take that role while he was watching the surroundings, Itachi, commented Tony with a shrug, how else would we get you to cross glances with him and submerge him in your strongest Jinjutsu? Let's not waste time, Kakashi, do it. Itachi didn't know how much he could hold a creature like Zetsu. Just to be sure, he actually used a simultaneous double illusion on the white Zetsu and the black Zetsu separately. In other words, he was consuming chakra worth four Kage opponents to be sure. Kakashi nodded and closed his eyes, when he opened them, his Sharingan had changed. Kamui. A space whirl caught the two Zetsus, twisting unnaturally until they disappeared next to a piece of the ground. Kakashi's eyes started to bleed from his body's reaction to the effort and his chakra bottomed out as soon as he finished the technique it's much more demanding on the two of them. He complained while enduring the aftermath. Ding! The host has complied. Eat the medicine and my food, Kakashi Tony reminded him ignoring the system window. Yes, Kakashi closed his eyes, but still took out what he needed and started to recover. I'm starting to understand why you were so worried about Zetsu, Itachi commented, when he saw that he resorted to the Mokutan on the illusion, his perception of the danger level grew three notches. Tony grimaced at Itachi's comment, it seems that explaining the danger of the Ten Tails and so on can't push this genius of the Uchiha clan enough. Guy. Tony shouted from the cave, it's over now, come and take care of helping Kakashi later to go back to the village. Since these two are working too, let them support each other. Did everything go well? As a qualified jonin, Guy remembered all the countermeasures they had planned, so he was quite incredulous at the sudden victory you can trust me Kakashi. Let my youth show you the way. You don't need to shout, your voice reverberates in the cave. Kakashi said helplessly as he covered his ears. Oops, sorry, laughed Guy, feeling a bit bad for barging in on his rival's recovery. What do we do now? Itachi asked. We go back to the village and once Kakashi recovers, we'll give him back his original right eye and destroy Abito's first eye under your testimony, explained Tony, once we're sure that everything is fine and the other eye has been grown in the lab, we'll repeat the operation and Black Zetsu will be trapped forever in the Kamui dimension. Didn't you want to take care of Kabuto? I do, Tony affirmed while opening his hands symbolically showing his inability to act, but I can no longer use the owl and I have no information on his location. Knowing what I know about him, I don't think he'll let himself be found easily, he sighed, if it wasn't for the fact that he learned Edo Tensei from Orochimaru, I wouldn't really be that worried. 
I understand, Itachi frowned, naturally he knew the nature of this technique and an enhanced version was not something desirable as an enemy, once I'm done handling the clan's affairs, I'll help you look for him. I won't be at ease either if someone like that is on the loose, watching from the shadows. Perhaps he would even have thoughts of doing something to Sasuke. I couldn't allow that. Since the only survivors are Itachi and Sasuke, by blood hierarchy, Itachi is now the patriarch of the Uchiha clan. Sasuke simply doesn't have the political finesse or administrative prowess to assume the position, not to mention he himself is not interested. That would be a great help, thank you, Tony thanked. Itachi had contacts on the outside that he couldn't get, so using the intelligence provided by his business, Itachi, and the village, the chances of finding Kabuto were undoubtedly greater. Tony this time it was Kakashi who added to the conversation after they finished eating what do you plan to do from now on? What do you mean? Tony didn't understand the sudden question. Well, I've been thinking that after I retire, there would be a vacancy left and maybe you would be interested in filling it. Having your own team of academy graduates, guiding the new generation and all that. I know you have a business and you don't really need to do missions, but I think it would be a very beneficial experience for you. Mm, I can't say I'm not intrigued, Tony replied, seriously considering the proposal, I should discuss it with Tsunade to find out all the details, but it would be an option. With his level of strength, his wealth and his fame, there weren't too many new experiences the ninja world could offer him anymore. He still had almost all the bijus with him and that could greatly reduce the length of any war. Becoming a master could be interesting. As for matters like the Snow Country, the Moon Survivor, the Dragon Vein and so on, let Naruto take care of those little things. This, Tony, guy called, actually, couldn't you just send us back to the village? The cave fell silent. Guy had a good point, so with a puff of smoke, the four disappeared from the cave by reverse summoning without adding a single word. Kakashi was taken to the hospital by Guy, Itachi gave a small lesson in humility to Team 7 for their recklessness while Tony as mission leader, went to report their success to Tsunade's office. On the way, he checked the reward. Ding! The host has successfully accomplished the mission. Handing out rewards. Reward method to practice and view bloodline condensation chocolate coins 1. System, what is bloodline condensation? The host currently possesses traits that can be inherited by his descendants when the time comes, such as gourmet cells. But because there is only one female with those traits, the host's current mate, the offspring's blood will be diluted over time and they will revert to being ordinary people. With the condensation of the bloodline, they will not only be able to maintain a lineage such as the Uchiha, Hyuga, Inazuka, Aburame, Yamanaka, Nara, etc. But they will also be able to inherit more things, forming a completely new ninja clan in every way. Inherit more. Like what? Like a portion of the host's devil fruit ability or some particular abilities he got from the system, such as Breath of N, Sound Bazooka, etc. In addition, they will also be able to get summoning contracts from the host according to their affinity from birth. Tony was very satisfied with the reward, but he asked the system that the Breath of End skill not be included, because of its danger due to lack of control of the little ones. Entering the Hokage building and after entering the office, he explained the development of events to Tsunade. So of the more immediate threats, only Kabuto is left Tsunade's side in relief knowing that that elderly monster named Zetsu was handled without too much trouble. Itachi agreed to help in his quest once he finishes handling all the Uchiha clan's affairs, which should give us more opportunities, Tony added. Good, but for now, you should go home as fast as you can Tsunade said very seriously I made an examination to Taiyuya and I must say that the situation is worse than you expected. What do you mean? Tony suddenly asked nervously, not knowing where to put his hands does she have a solution. Can I help in any way? Don't worry. Her condition may improve and I have already prepared a plan for her with Karen's help, you just need to be especially attentive to her during her current condition. How long will she need to recover? Tony asked anxiously. I would say about nine months, answered Tsunade, trying to keep a serious facade, so you'd better get your mind right, because it's going to be quite an adventure. End